All right, guys. Good evening. Hello, everybody. Hey, we got a couple people hanging out already. That's fantastic. Welcome to the Keep On Wrenching live stream. I got some uh, ambitious goals tonight. <laughs> for sure. Thanks for hopping in, man. Got the coffee. It's been a week, guys. It has definitely been a week, at least in the United States. It's been a very fascinating week. Um, haven't really gotten anything done on the bike, not going to lie. Um, just been preoccupied with some other stuff and haven't really done much. So we're kind of picking up where we left off on the live stream. Going to deal with the wiring some other night. I just do not have wiring in my agenda for tonight. I think instead what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the engine tonight. We are going to, uh, I don't know, just start taking a look at what we have and then if you remember from previous streams, we identified one little problem on this motor and it came down to the starter. Both of these bolts are broke off on the starter. So we're gonna get it. Hey Tula, thanks for hopping in tonight. We're, go we're, going, we're going after the starter tonight. I think that's what we're gonna do for sure. Um, get those bolts out of there and go from there. But uh, that's not the easiest job in the world. We're gonna have to tear into this motor just a little bit to get at it. So that's kind of uh, kind of the goal tonight. I think that's what we're doing. Talk to me a little bit about your, your header pipe situation. What's going on, man? Got some new stuff in the shop that I'm also extremely, extremely uh, excited about. I wanna hold off until we get a few more members here because this is, uh, this is legit stuff. It's making me pretty excited, but number one, the most important thing that I did get this week, got myself a little microfiber feather duster for these motorcycles, because I'm telling you, this thing gets dusty really fast working in this small space. This little micro duster feather thing um, is pretty damn amazing. So I like that. Uh, another little addition to the shop, I finally got myself a set of proper tire tools so um, give these a whirl. I actually used these on uh, the front wheel this past weekend. Uh, was it this weekend or was it the weekend before? I don't remember, man. Time is just bleeding all into itself here. Um, but yeah, got a couple of proper tire irons. Instead of having to use the, uh, um, what I was using, a big old buck knife and a long screwdriver or a crowbar, uh, now, I got a, now I got a couple of uh, real tools that we can deal with here. So. We added that, so tools-wise this week, not a whole lot. We got the tire tool, and then we got the feather duster, the microfiber feather duster, which I should actually use to dust off the cameras once in a while to make sure that you guys are getting a good view of what's going on. Now, uh, let me grab this camera over here, and I'll show you what I picked up as well. So, Kobe's Customs, a dead, <laughs> Anthony, it looks like a dead Elmo for sure. Um, yeah, you're totally right. I'll never get that out of there, but it's orange. It's kind of orange, like uh, Keep On Wrenching's logo and stuff. So I thought it was cool, but man, it, it just helps to keep the dust down and does all that. But um, I get a lot of my parts from Kobe's Customs, and I actually want to uh, bring up his website here real quick. Let me pull that up. We can reference it. Oh, nice. He's popping right up in search. That is great to see. Fantastic, but I was able to pick up a number of different items that I needed. Now, I was really hurting for really just a seat lock is where it all kind of came together. I was like, I don't have a seat lock. I need a seat lock and a seat latch. I didn't have one. The one that's on the bike right now, I actually went and stole off of the 72 CL. So I got to go put those back because I'm sure that bike's going to be angry with me. But take a look at this. We actually got a matching set of everything. I'll have to paint this black and everything. But uh, we got a seat lock, all right? Can paint that, that'll be all fine. We got our seat latch, which is amazing. And look at this, all the rubber pieces are still in this piece as well. It's nice to see. So I can take these out, recondition these, go through that whole deal, and go through that. And got the ignition to match the seat lock. Because I'm telling you, one of the most frustrating things uh, with my 72 CL is that I have two different keys for that bike. And it's a major pain in my ass. I really, really uh, get annoyed with having to have those two keys. 
So you are got a key here. I haven't even tested this yet. Hopefully they work. Yes, yes, indeed. It's gonna work. And hopefully, let's see if we can just do this on, on the desk here. He gave me another tumbler. Oh, shoot, I think I might've just mucked something up here. Oh no, it should be fine. I just wanna see if this, this actually is gonna pull off here. Tula, all kinds of drama. Let me read this here, I'm just, oh yeah, totally. So that's all gonna work out there. So I got a match set of everything and he did put another tumbler in here, which I believe is for the front fork lock. So how crazy is that? I wonder how this goes, oh, here we go. It goes just like this, something like that. We'll figure that out at another time, but it's really cool to have a nice matching set with a key. I thought that was very, 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 very cool. There's a spring here. I have to figure out what the hell that's for. And we got a little screw. So what I like about Kobe's Customs is that the guy knows his stuff for sure. And um, the other thing is, is that he, he in usually includes like all the bits, all the little things that you need. So if you're looking for uh, especially Honda stuff. He has a lot, a lot, a lot of Honda stuff. Uh, let's just click through that because that's what we're focusing on here. Here's all his Honda stuff should be right here. So he's only got 603 parts available for us on his website right now. Um, but there's some good odds and ends in here over on his site. And uh, I tell you what, he's uh, shipping out of uh, Minnesota. It comes out really fast. Um, I think I got this stuff in just a, just a few days actually from packaging it up, but I mean, it's a little bit of everything over on Kobe's Customs. I mean, we've got 10 freaking page, over 10 pages of, uh, of different parts that you're gonna need. And the guy knows his stuff, which is really awesome. He's really familiar uh, with the bikes. And, uh, oh, there, we might run, oh, that's a 360 motor, uh, starter motor. But anyway, you know, and reasonable prices too um, on all this stuff. Good guy, um, actually had the pleasure of meeting him a while back, God, it was probably two years ago at this point. Um, but he's a super, super, super uh, cool guy, and it's Kobe's Customs is who got me uh, kind of set up with this set. And what I just love about it, again, is, you know, it's all here. It's all here. All the little spacers are here, the nuts, the bolts, the washers, the little mounting screws, everything is all here. <laughs> I'm not having to, to do much uh, to, to fill in the blanks here to get all this stuff going. And then plus we got the ignition kind of hanging out there as well. So that was a big win for sure. Drew's in. What's up, Brian? Supper and live stream. Can't beat that. Awesome, man. Thanks for joining in. Here, look at that. Even got the little metal spacers in there. The little, uh, let's see, pull one of those out. Boom. That came with the kit too. Absolutely uh, thrilled with that. So I'll have to swap all that out. That's an easy project for the weekend. So yeah, we're getting things rolling again. Uh, we're building up. So we're gonna look at this bad boy tonight. We're gonna look at the engine tonight. Uh, we're gonna deal with that starter problem. Okay, Tula Tom, what is going on here? There's, there, there's a book here. There's a book here that we gotta read. Uh, Tula, my left side muffler was a bear to get off as opposed to the right side. The right side had no graphite gasket which is why that slipped off so easily after removing the clamp, okay? The left side did have a graphite gasket on it and it had disintegrated with part of the pipe, basically a rusted out area where it connects to the muffler. Send me a pic. I did put a new time cert in the fork drain bolt that was stripped. I think that'll work out nicely, perfect. That fork lock cap is hard to come by in good condition, most are cracked, wonderful. So another probably props uh, right, right there, that's awesome. So, um, awesome, okay. And then you said something about chromine, which I was uh, kind of interested about earlier as well. So guys, also got some merch in, got my uh, Keep On Wrenching mug, which I'm kind of excited about. It's a big mug, holds a lot of coffee. It, it fits, a, fits a guy like me very, very well. Mm, gonna need that coffee tonight. And then also, dude, check this out. The freaking t-shirts are actually pretty damn nice. Really comfortable, really soft, and good stuff. So I'm excited. Okay, back to camera one because I got cool stuff to share. So I've got my book open, got my book all ready to rock. Here we got the starter motor, everything ready to go there. But I want to get into, let's see, get you guys a little better angle here. Boom. 
Drew is in the house, and it is time to uh, thank this kind sir uh, for doing some service for Keep On Wrenching, guys. Um, this is awesome, awesome, awesome stuff that, that he did. A uh, little Honda emblem with the Keep On Wrenching, but here's the really cool stuff. Dude, I finally got stickers, guys. I got stickers, and I just got to come up with a way to get them out of here. Uh, Drew donated these to the stream for pretty much all of us. So uh, this is badass. Give Drew some props in the chat for sure. Um, really, man, you didn't have to do that, but this is fantastic. Um, and then also the ones I really, 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 really love are these logoed ones. These are freaking cool. I'm going to check these out. <laughs> How cool is that, man? It's so cool to like see the, see the logo kind of come to life on stuff. So um, it's, it's incredible. So we've got some stickers to get out to the crew. I'm a little disappointed um, if Doug gets into the stream. Um, I'm going to have to mail him a sticker. And also Brian, if he shows up tonight, I'm going to have to mail a sticker. So what I'd like to do is when I got to send some parts out to some of you guys is make sure everybody gets a sticker because that's pretty cool. Now, one of the other things uh, Drew sent in, and this was kind of, I'm going to call it a custom freaking piece on a little bit of pegboard laminated with the Keep On Wrench and logo. This is going to be a key rack. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mount some nice hooks um, and just hang all of my Honda keys. The, the, the question I have in my head right now is how many should I put on there? Should I put four on there? Should I put six on there? Should I do 10 sets of keys? Like how, how long is this going to be going on, guys? I, I, I honestly don't know. But how cool is that? That's going to look awesome hanging on the wall. I love it. And then also a nice little tool rack uh, just out of pegboard just like that as well. So um, the cool part of this as well is that there are a bunch of these stickers. Um, so I can get rid of some of these to some of you as well. And uh, I don't know, just kind of cool stuff for, I don't know, got to think of a cool way to, to kind of give out some of this stuff and, and hook you guys up because you're doing awesome stuff. So um, these, are, these are pure gold. I got to go put one of these on my Subaru here uh, your, uh, as many, yeah, tool as many keys as it can hold, yeah, or how many um, dollars my budget can handle. You know, that's the other thing. And then to you know, I the the stickers came. I was super thrilled about all of that stuff. And uh, the guy listens a little too closely on the live streams, I think, because I, I was kind of losing my mind a little bit last time uh, because I didn't have good sets of needle nose. And here he goes. He he comes in for the win right here. Nice angled set here. We're gonna get a ton of use out of these. Um, and then a nice kind of pinchy, real tiny ones that we can get in. I could see this working real good on some circlips and, and, and things like that. So um, thank you, Drew, for the, the generosity to the stream and, and really hooking up everybody uh, that's a part of the Keep On Wrenching community. I mean, these are badass. These are badass. <laughs> it's just so cool to see that you know, random logos starting to show up in different places. So um, what else is going on? We got all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, there's Kobe's, and then I'll just do a real quick rundown of everything going on. If you're new to the stream, make sure you join the Facebook group. Uh, that's the Keep On Wrenching community group, up to 81 members now. And then also there's KeepOnWrenching.com, where you can sign up for the newsletter. You can also check out some of the builds, some of the things that, 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 that I've been doing. Uh, links to all the videos, the 200 plus videos, 40 hours of restoration content over on the YouTube channels, all linked up there. Be working through on these articles um, to uh, get these all updated. I'm probably going to take like one a month and just try to build out each one of these different pages. The eBay store, that's coming as well. I'm going to start selling some of these parts, some refurbished, some of them not. Um, just extra stuff because I've got a ton of stuff behind me as you can tell and also if you like the stream You can always support you can donate or you can go and check out the merch store I'm wearing the t-shirt tonight, and I got the coffee mug in my hand um, I, I ordered a bunch of it. I'll show a little bit more off on the stream here. I got some other samples. I can show you um, Quality stuff. I, I was a little bit worried that the quality wasn't going to be there on that. I'm not going to lie. Um, but it's pretty solid. I really, really uh, am, am happy with how that all turned out. So, all right. We've already been going for, what, 15 minutes? Almost. Almost 15 minutes. It's time to get wrenching, okay? So let's hop over to the table. Let's get to work. I'm going to grab my coffee because I think I'm going to need it tonight. But this whole process could be dramatically expedited by the addition of power tools to the mix. You guys will be really proud of me, actually, because 
I did take the time. <laughs> Here, let me show you this. Got to grab the battery. Um, I did take the time to organize my sockets. Look at that. <laughs> I think I'm missing a few. Um, they're laying around here someplace, but I did take the time to organize some of my sockets. So that's going to be good. I'm going to have all that in one place. So you guys don't have to listen to me rattling around in my toolbox constantly trying to find things. So let me get this out of the way. I'll set this over here for now. The focus tonight, again, is this starter, which, take a close look at it, both of these nuts or both of these screws, bolts, whatever the hell you want to call them, are broke off. Both of them are. That one didn't come out either. Pretty sure I flashed a light down there. I couldn't see it. But this one's broke. So in order to really properly do this, we got to take the whole darn thing apart. <laughs> so this ain't a, ain't a small job. I'm going to see if I, I read the, through, the, through the instructions once and I was like, okay, um, I'm not sure I have to go that deep, but maybe we do. We're going to find out today on the live stream. So how's that sound? Turn our attention away from shiny, painty, chromey, aluminum-y things or shining, polishing. Let's see if we can get into a motor a little bit. Make sure you guys got a good view of what's going on here tonight. That looks pretty good to me. I got power. I'm wondering what's going to happen here. I have drained the oil out of this engine. Um, it is free. I don't believe I'm going to have to do a top end on it or I don't plan on doing it. I'm just going to run it and uh, see what happens. I'll do a compression test and all that stuff on it for sure. But um, overall, I think I'm going to just clean it, polish it and get her over with. So I'm gonna find my JIS screwdrivers. I wanna make sure I find the right one. Eventually I'm gonna remember like which ones fit the absolute best. I think this is a flatty when I go into here. Yeah, these feel pretty good. Just wanna be able to pull these out without a whole bunch of damn drama. That's really what I would like to do. You can see if this, that, yeah, that would probably be for that. That feels a little loose. Yeah, it's definitely this one. The proper bit, JIS, Japanese industry standard, is going to be what we want for all this stuff. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to see if this torque, uh, the, uh, the, the electric torque, can knock these things out. If not, of course, we always have the trusty impact driver. I think, you know, whether or not... I think you're gonna end up having to use these darn things at some point anyway. Um, on the side cover ones, I mean, I, I would just guarantee that you're gonna to have to use those. But we'll see. I, I mean, I might be completely blown away by the results of this. If these start popping out like crazy beans, I'm gonna lose my mind. JIS number three, let me see what I put in there. Let me see what I put in there, if I can even see. Yeah, I got a three right here. So we should be right. Tula approves. We're good. We got to take these covers off. Let's see if this thing will do it. I'm not totally sure, but we'll find out. Oh, that's, that can't be real. Um, that uh, actually popped right out. <laughs> oh, God, I've been wasting my life. I have been wasting my life on these. Let's see if we're as lucky on this one. Oh my goodness. Trying to see here, there's a bolt missing here on this edge right here. Um, I'm wondering if there might be a broken one here as well. And uh, we'll have to investigate that, but we can keep on digging into this and uh, see if the rest of these pop out. Yeah, hot diggity. This, this is incredible. I wonder if this is, it doesn't seem like it's been apart before. Get down under here. Yeah, that one pops right out. See this one, this one here is real rusty. Yeah, there's a little inward pressure and all of those actually came free. <laughs> oh boy, what would I do without keep on wrenching? Because uh, you guys encouraged me to do this. Yeah, that one was stuck and that popped right out. That one fought just a little bit. 
Ooh, that one. That one could be a little problematic. Let's get down in here. That one broke free. I'm trying to give it as much inward as I can here. That one popped right away. So this one is going to be a little bit of a problem. And we can try these as well. I thought these were a little bit different one. Yeah, that's a sharper one for sure. So a three. And then this is a PH2. What are the numbers on these? That should do it. We'll try it. We'll see what happens. That popped. You don't necessarily have to necessarily take these off, but man, I've never taken those three out faster in my life. Holy buckets. So this one did completely cave in on me, unfortunately, this top one. Get you a little better look here. This one stripped out on me pretty bad. Don't think I'm gonna be able to salvage that one. I'm not even gonna try it with the electric because I'm just gonna blow it all apart, but I am gonna try it real quick with just the old school to see if I can get it to turn. It's a little bit awkward on the table here. It's pretty stripped. Yeah, there ain't much of a head there. So we got a couple options here when this happens. I'm actually kind of glad this happened. It'd be like, you know, I'd have to come up with another half hour of content if that didn't work. So yeah, it was a two. Man, Tula knows this stuff. If you ever have questions, you can always, always ask Tula. He seems to, seems to know this stuff very, very well. So um, in this case, honestly, right here, what, what, what I feel like doing is I'm just gonna drill this out and this head will actually just come right out. That's the easiest um, for me at this juncture and then we can basically just pop it out. So don't freak out, okay? If, if uh, it's not totally working out for you, you can always, 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 always fix this stuff. Gotta find my drill. That's the only thing, God, I, you know, I thought I got my impact, I don't need a drill anymore. That's not true because you do need a drill to do certain tasks. What did I do with that darn thing? Man, I was feeling so organized. I was feeling so good about everything. Now I went and lost my big drill. There it is, boom. I put it back over with all the woodworking stuff. What the hell was I thinking there? But these are pretty soft. They come out pretty easy from my experience anyway. Um, it's just a matter of carefully drilling this stuff out and using a proper, you know, I like to put a nice proper pilot in and kind of just work our way up so you don't get too aggressive right off the bat. So let me see, let me get you guys a good look here. Just did this by dremeling a slot and removing it with a flathead. Yep, that's another option. I mean, we could try that. Um, we could definitely do that. I actually have my Dremel uh, sitting right here. I mean, let's, let's, let's try that. I'm game. I like taking suggestions from people and seeing what other people are doing to be successful. And I, and I actually happen to have a cutting bit on my tool right now. Just need a little bit of power and we can do that. Great suggestion, Tyler. But again, you know, either way, you can just start drilling this and this will fall right out. But you can always just cut a slot. Gotta remember to practice what I preach here. Safety first. Get the old head shield out. Make sure you guys got a good view. We're going right here. Let's do it. Let's move this out of the way. And let's get yeah, cut a slot. Good to see you, by the way, Tyler. I think my only recommendation with doing a slot is go deep. Go as deep as you possibly can, uh, just to save yourself the headache of busting it all off again. Go as deep as you can. I would think that should do it. I 
kind of want to try the old school. Try the old school uh, impact. I don't know, just something special about the old impact. I just, I enjoy them. There, look at that. Got a nice bite on that. That's going to be perfect. We can do that. Love it. Hopefully another, I hope another one maybe locks up. I don't want to, I don't necessarily have to take this other side apart tonight. So would like to leave that, but that's perfect little slot. Let me give you a look at that. Come here. Just like that. Boom. Got a good grip. I think we'll be good on that. Boom. And let me make sure I've got ample leverage on it. It's kind of weird being up on a table like this. I'm trying to get used to, used to that a little bit. Make sure you're in real tight. Pull that around, get some torque. It turned. There we go, there we go. Just like that. Couple more. That should come out. Great suggestion, Tyler. Great, great, great. Some of them, this is, that can be very difficult to do um, because they're kind of down in these grooves here. That's where I just probably just drill these out. But for this one, that works freaking perfect. You know, <laughs> having one be challenging on that job is a win. And honestly, that makes me feel even better about just rolling with this engine. Um, Feel good about it. I will not be reusing these. I actually have, I actually have brand new bolt kit for the entire bike over here. So I got the common motor bolt set, all brand new stuff for the cases and pretty much the entire bike. So that's gonna be sweet. Now these are the Allen head top show you one of these it's like that yeah these will be so much easier for the next person to have to take apart <laughs> than these cruddy little screws so that'll work out really really good now we can go ahead and take these out so i think i can go back to my little impact thing colin welcome to the stream man good to see you Thanks for joining in. I hope you're having a good week. Tomorrow is Friday. Which is awesome. Welcome to the stream. WD-40 vice grips. S. Garvin, that's actually true. You can get a, get a vice grip uh, behind that, uh, around those, and sometimes you can break them loose. I did that on my first, my very first bike. That's how I did it on the 70. I was able to get my vice grip around it. And then, my God, this is, this is just life changing. Having this tool, I mean, wow. I'd be on my fifth bike right now if I would have started using this thing a lot sooner. But yeah, get a vice, just cramp down on, on, on with the vice grip. Sometimes you can break them free for sure. For sure, for sure. In a pinch, there's a lot of different ways to do it, just like everything else in the world, right? Um, but yeah, just have a one you wanna do. Let's go ahead and take, oh yeah, check this out. So this cover, I'm probably not gonna put back on there. Cause if you guys remember, I've already got a beautiful one. So look at this before and after. I mean, ideally this is what, this is what we're going for guys. I mean, this is it. We're going for nice shiny cover like that. And we want this whole engine looking like that. <laughs> now that is not going to happen tonight. This is going to take a lot of work to get this to happen, but uh, that's what it can be. So never give up. <laughs> never give up. It can be done. That's, that's what we're going for. And then similarly, I've got that cover and this cover. God, we could dream a little bit. Let's take a little bit of time and dream. Yeah. Got a cover, I got a nice polished cover ready to go for these two. Got a couple more to go, but I think that's gonna look pretty damn special on the Apocalypse bike. 
I'm excited. I hope you are too. I don't know what I would have to do in order to make you uh, excited uh, after seeing that. Now remember, these don't always come out because there is a little rubber O-ring in there that'll kind of hold these up just a little bit. So you might think you're not getting, getting these three out here, but they're coming out, they're out. So here you can see that little O-ring right there. Sometimes you'll uh, waste a ton of time thinking that you didn't make it when in fact you've done it and you have already been successful at your mission. So just don't forget that. Just wanna make sure I'm keeping a little bit more organized because I watched back one of the streams the other day and I felt like I was fumbling around looking for tools a lot. And I was like, ah, eh, that's kind of annoying. You know, I shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be getting hung up on stuff like that. So trying to stay a little bit more organized. All right, so we got one more right here and that should be all of them on that cover. And I don't think a ton of oil is gonna come pouring out of here. There we go, all three of those. I got the rubber seals. I'm gonna grab a little bin just in case a little bit of oil is gonna come out of there. Should have it, yeah, perfect. Got just a small little unit there. And then I got a rubber hammer. Get this points thing out of the way here. Sometimes if you just give it, a, give it some light taps, that cover might loosen up just a little bit. Worst case, you can grab like a plastic putty. Um, don't use metal on this for sure. Um, you don't want to be using like a metal putty knife or anything. That would be very bad. Just kind of give it some gentle taps all the way around. I'm already getting this back cover, which is usually a hell of a lot harder, which is crazy. Colin. I've got to go for a while, but I'll be back. We'll be waiting for you. Come on back. Wow, this is crazy. The, this back cover is coming off first. So <laughs> you guys, if you, this is your first time or you've never dove into this, these little, they're little pins, they're like alignment pins. A lot of times these can like get all crusted up and they can be a hang up point for you big time when you're trying to take these apart. The, the fact that this engine is coming apart like this um, is, is really, 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 really encouraging to me. Um, I'm feeling really good about it. This is already coming. Should be able to just pull this straight off. Yep. Oh, come on. There we go. Just a little dribble of oil came out the bottom there. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy at all. That can hang there, just like that. God, I can't believe that came out that easily. Um, I'm actually kind of floored by that. I am really floored that it came out that easily because usually this front cover comes off first. Being kind of careful here. I'm gonna have to get something in there to do it. I gotta see if I got a plastic putty down here. Oh, it's always something, guys. It's always something with these darn things. That might work. Like, what are the odds that that cover wouldn't come off and the other one would? That's very surprising. It's very, 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 very surprising um, to me that that's the issue. But again, don't use um, metal tools when trying to get this off. I'm just gonna get this back on here so I'm not bashing down on the piece. See if we can break this free just a little bit. This, of course, this thing is about as dull as a baseball bat. I hate to use anything metal, but I could use, might be able to just pick through that with just a little dental pick and get that to come off. There might have been like a little tab or something. It's just a matter of getting it started and the whole thing should peel right off. If you're gonna pry on it, I would pry on it high for sure. Come 
Oh, that is a stubborn cover right there. Hmm. It's always the things that you don't think are going to be too difficult that come back and kind of bite you in the ass. Kind of. Let's see. Sometimes there's a little tab underneath that I've seen that you can kind of pull from. Boy, that is one dry little gasket right there. There we go. Just needed to be patient. Give it some wax, a little bit of love, and that popped right off of there. No harm, no foul. So there's our cover. We're not probably gonna use this one on this bike. Um, probably go back to the one I already polished, or maybe I'll get all sentimental about it and I'll uh, do it. Yeah, Tula, that would've worked too. Like I say, man, there's a million ways to do things. Pull this bad boy out. Just like that, and then I gotta get this other cover off. Could we be as lucky to get both of these to drop? There's a dowel in the top of the clutch cover as well. That, oh, here, look at this. <clears throat> so I'm gonna need to find another cover. Look at this damage here. Yeah, look at that, it's all smashed up right here. I wonder if a chain broke or something at one point. So I'm not too worried about salvaging that. I'm not putting this back on the bike. Look, it's all cracked all the way down here. All right, so we can get a little violent with this one anyway. That's kind of a, kind of a nice green light. Let's see if we can get this off. Yeah, it's rocking, but again, here's, there's a dowel up here in this. I'll turn you guys so you guys can see. There's a little dowel. Get this thing out of the way, right here. And that is where it hangs up on my first bike, man. I got so frustrated with that. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I was like, why is this thing hung up? I was losing my mind. So again, this is a junk piece to me because of all this breakage that's going on here. But again, same process. I mean, just gently, you know, be working this piece back and forth. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab just a little deep creep just cause I know how big of a pain in the butt they can be. I'm just gonna saturate this end over here because they get locked up pretty good if I remember right I remember fighting this like nobody's business and then we'll be able to get our clutch cable out of the way that'll be nice just to clean up as well don't beat on aluminum like don't beat it like pound on it because this stuff can break I mean, I should put my visor on. I can show you how easy that, that piece would break if I really start pounding on it. Well, it's starting to move just a little bit. Just a little bit though, not a whole lot. I've got, let's see. I gotta clean off my putty knife here real quick. It's all covered with Bondo. Let's get this Bondo off my damn putty knife. This is one of those times where I did not clean my tools. And then I threw it back in the bin and now it's all just covered in Bondo. Let's do a quick clean since we're doing the stream. I need to set up like one more camera, I think, over in this corner. Boom. Boom, clean putty knife. That's gonna be beautiful. Yeah, we'll get the adjuster. Don't worry, Tula. I wanna see if I can get down inside of here. Let me give you a downward dog on this. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that cruddy little cover, dude. Crazy. There we go. See if we can get this down into this slot. Again, you could use metal. I mean, I used metal, I think, probably on my first two to get them apart, but you gotta be real careful. There, I just got this to move just a tad. That's all I'm looking for, is just to move this. There, there, that is exactly what I wanted to see. I hope you were able to see it just separated. Just a little bit. 
There we go. Yep, there's that guide. It's that guide that gets hung up all the time on these things. All right, so this is all coming apart pretty nice. So far, so good. I think that's a 12 millimeter. I'm gonna guess, I think it was a 12. Is it a 12? I'm pretty sure it is. Nope, it's not a 12. It's be a four, no, yeah, it's a 12. What the hell's going on with that one? My box end doesn't want to grab. Oh, it's all marred up. That's why. All right, next time we got to deal with this thing, we'll be tightening and adjusting the clutch cable. Won't that be nice? Now we can start moving this. I don't know. I'm kind of enjoying these live streams. Thanks for hanging out with me. Um, I know it's not like groundbreaking stuff, but maybe it's stuff that, that you, you all have been kind of curious about. There, that feels good when it moves like that. Pull this out. I don't remember, Tula, if you have to take that all the way out or not. I didn't think you did, but we'll find out. And kind of give this a little push. Lose the ball and your clutch will be horrible. That's true, there's a little ball in there. Yeah, we'll note that, we'll make sure we, we bag it. Still just hung up down there just a little and a little bit down underneath. Oh, it's gonna start, it's gonna get dirty now. I'm gonna move all this stuff out of the way and get over here and there. Ugh. There's, there's that piece, there's that piece, so the ball bearing must still, ball bearing looks like it is still inside the adjuster, which is good. I mean, this is probably one of the messier parts that you're gonna have to deal with. There's a spring here that we need to get undone. And we need to get the cable out. Now the, the clutch cable, the videos are on the YouTube channel if you need to, a step-by-step. -step. Here's how your clutch cable connects. Grab a little flat head. Uh, you know, gloves are a blessing and, and a curse. There. Oh, got it. Cool. So well, that wasn't too bad, actually, either. Sometimes you got to pull like a crazy person to get those out. But now our clutch cable's out of there. So let's set that down. Watch and make sure. Yeah, that ball bearing's going to be in there. We'll double check. This thing's been flopping around. I've been tripping on it <laughs> forever. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it's been really, really annoying. So... The cable, so let's go over to this camera here. So this cable, it's kind of free. Like, it kind of is free. It probably could be cleaned, but I'm a big fan of just getting new cables. I mean, we it probably could be refurbished. That might be a project for another day. But it does have some fraying uh, going on. Probably junk. Tula, no joke, right? It, took, take, it can take 20 minutes to get that cable out. Still don't know why. Pain, it can be. Again, tonight we're flying through this. This is incredible. Yeah, this cable's probably, probably junk. But you know what? In the apocalypse, if, if things go south and somebody needs a freaking clutch cable, it would probably work in a pinch. So that's okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm really blown away um, how fast that came apart, 100%. Now the fabled ball bearing. I read about these all the time on the, uh, on the forums. Yep, it's in there all right. It's in there. Oh, got to get you guys down. Got to get you guys down on the action here because I don't want you to miss a thing. Yep, it's a lot of grease. See if I can get her to fall out. It's pretty greasy in there. Uh, I need uh, a little bit of WD would work. Or, <laughs> even better, since that is grease, it's a perfect job for a little bit of super clean. I've been using this quite a bit. I actually really do like it. Works very, very well. Clean stuff up really quick. I'm gonna try and do the entire engine, um, like do a degrease on the engine using it. 
Um, it's uh, really good stuff. And just like that. There it is. Oh, I think it fell. There, yeah, right there. There it fell out. So here it is. Oh, come back over here, buddy. Come on, buddy. Don't make me get Drew's needle nose so I can get you out of here. Try not to drop it on the floor. That's what I'm praying for. There it is. Oop, I, almost, I, I almost dropped it on the damn floor. Oh, there it is. There's our little ball bearing. Don't want to lose that, man. And you do not want to forget to put that in. All right, so we've got that. And I should actually get a little bag right now. We've got our adjuster parts right here. And I got a whole bunch of like nuts and stuff that maybe a squirrel or something left behind. But these are key parts right here. And then we're gonna wanna get at this part here. But I wanna get a little baggie or something so I do not lose these parts. I would be very disappointed in myself if I lost those parts. So into a Ziploc they go. And they can hang out there. All right, man, we got freaking easy sailing right now. I think this is a perfect opportunity to try out these needle nose. And I think I'm gonna try these long, thin ones over here. See how these work. Open these bad boys up. Again, Drew, freaking amazing stuff, man. The stickers are amazing. Um, the key holder is amazing. And I, I'm looking forward to getting this stuff out to the community and doing that. That was such an awesome surprise. So this little spring down in here is a, is a virgin journey of these. And my goodness, did that make that job easy as well. <laughs> Thanks, Drew, saved me a giant headache. And there it is. There's that whole piece. We'll clean, it, clean that all up. And we can also get this part out as well. Nice, nice thick handle on these. Feel good in the hand. Come on. This other one's a little bit tighter to get at. Almost got, there's so much grit and gut gunk in this portion of these bikes. There we go, and there's our spring. All right. Fabulous, fabulous. And here's our cover. So this is gonna be junk, sadly, though, because of the breakage on it. Um, can't do that. There should be a whole wing, basically, that comes out here. Um, I've got another one. I can show you guys what that is supposed to look like. I think I have one readily available over here. Now that I'm starting to get a little bit more organized um, with how things are working. Yeah, here's one. Here's one. Here's what one should look like. Should have a little wing on it, just like this. So this will probably end up being the candidate, the one that we end up putting on the bike right here. Drew, my wife thinks you sound just like Jack Black. Close my eyes and I think I hear it too. Too funny. Um, I get that comment on a lot of the videos that I sound like Jack Black. <laughs> I don't personally hear it, um, but hey, I, I mean, it's, uh, it is what it is. So I, I don't know if I really truly understand like how I sound. So yeah, Jack Black, that is not the first time uh, that I have, have heard that. So yeah, just a side-by-side -side comparison here of these. You know, this is the good one, this is the bad one. I would guess that probably at some point a uh, chain broke, possibly threw up there, broke it. That'd be my guess. But either way, these are, these are, these are all interchangeable. So I'm not too worried about it. I'm gonna put this one in, into the junk box. And I'm gonna put this one on the table to be polished. <laughs> and I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put that into this bag. So there's all this stuff. I'm gonna put it over here and there it is. We're golden. All right. No oil is coming out of the bottom of this thing. So that's, that's a wonderful, wonderful thing to see. Get this out of the way. And now we should be able to tackle a couple other things. So we got a good view. We got a good view. God, this, this, uh, 
<clears throat> points wire is driving me crazy. It just like keeps crawling back. It just wants to be in the action. Try and tuck that under there once and for all. So looking down in here, let me get you over there. Like something like this might work. There we go. Perfect. That's a perfect shot actually. All right. So here we got a wire. This is coming over to the stator coil. There's a little rubber piece on this. You just pull this straight out. This black stuff is gonna break, but you're gonna pull it out. There's a little rubber stopper right here. Okay. Now there's a metal holder right here. You can just kind of bend that down just a little bit, move that down just a little bit, pull that out. And now this is gonna be free. Now, if you remember on the wiring, God, I almost wish I was making a video right now because this would be key. So right here is your neutral switch wire. That's gonna wire up into that wiring harness and it goes through and uh, makes all that work. So that just pulls straight off, ideally, maybe. Another great time for a little set of needle nose, grab the brass, grab the fitting a little bit. There we go. Just need a little grip. That wire pops right off. Now we can move over here. Give my hands a little wipey wipe. Ooh, I almost forgot to put my screw into that Ziploc bag from the other part. And you guys can see okay, I think. This should be able to come off. It might fight you a little bit because it is a magnet, but once you've done that, this whole piece falls right off. There we go. That actually looks really, really clean inside. That doesn't look bad. I've seen way worse. I mean, I think the 72 is like one of the worst case scenario bikes possible for sure. Um, this looks really good. This might, this will probably end up going back on the bike. We can uh, dive into that part a little bit more because I have not polished that part yet. Oh, look, I got the first grease on the keep on wrenching mug. Got the first little, little, little fingerprint of grease on it. It's been, uh, it's been broke in. It's good to go. All right, center you so you guys can see what's going on. And I can try to figure out what the hell my next step is. Grab this little gasket. It'll probably come off in pieces. I can't believe I just touched that and it came off. Um, that's incredible. And now, this is where the book got kind of, uh, the book got a little interesting. Because I didn't think I had to go this deep. But apparently, I do. I am open to your suggestions for sure. But in reading the book, it sounded like we had to go ahead and deal with this whole damn rotor situation again. So again, this manual is available for download on keeponwrenching.com. If you don't have a good, um, a good manual, go to the resources section. We don't need no stinking manual. And uh, it's right here. The same book I'm using is available right here for low res. If you need a high res, uh, you can feel free to email me. I'll see if I can get, get you one. Um, but the low res is usually fine for everything. Otherwise, it's like a gig file. It's a huge file. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, that's uh, on the website, keeponwrenching.com. While you're there, of course, check out the support page, donate, check out some of the merchandise, and most importantly, sign up for that e-newsletter right there, monthly newsletter coming out. So disconnect the lead we got that remove the alternator cover both sections of the left crankcase cover and disconnect the neutral switch lead we just did that now it says remove the alternator rotor using either the special puller or the rear axle as outlined in chapter four so in the keep on wrenching group earlier uh this week uh somebody i think somebody was watching the live stream or whatever it was oh where is it ah over here yeah, they, uh, they, they were talking about how you could do that. Now, I don't know where that, that conversation is, and we got some stuff happening on the group, but if you're not a member already of the Keep On Wrenching community group, 
uh, make sure that you go and sign up for that. We're up to 81 members now, which is awesome. Um, but I thought it was so cool how I was uh, kind of looking into how to do this thing tonight. And, uh, and uh, yeah, there it said it. It said, or the rear axle as outlined in Chapter 4. So I might go and find, I wonder if I got a rear axle laying around here someplace. I think I do. If I do, we might try that. And then it says, remove the starter sprocket setting plate secured by the Phillips screw and remove the two sprockets and chain together. Okay, so yeah, they're, they're, they're asking me to take that all apart again. Remove the starter sprocket, remove the alternator rotor using either the special puller, blah, 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 blah. So I think I have to do that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I do. Lab rat, you think I sound like Jack Black too? Just a little bit higher? Just a little bit higher? That's okay, I like Jack Black. You know, School of Rock is honestly probably one of my, uh, one of, I wouldn't say like favorite, but it's a movie that, that I kind of appreciate and I enjoy um, for sure. So yeah, that's cool, Jack Black. Um, I've, I've been uh, compared to worse. I will say that right off the bat. I have definitely been compared um, or um, thought, you, know, you sound like something, what was the one I got one time? And I was like, oh dear God, no, well, that's not a good thing. Let's see. So I wonder if our impact driver can help us out here on this 14 to get this off. We do have to take that off, huh? There's not enough room just to pull that off. No, not without being mucky with it. So we're going to have to do that real quick. We're going to have to do it. Could be worse. If I remember right, that was a 14 and Let's see, 12, 13, 14. This should be a 14. My goodness, is it nice to have tools um, that are working in order. I don't know if this thing's in gear or what, what's going to happen here. Let's see if it'll just do it. Is that moving or not? Not moving, that's good. Uh, let's see. We had the same deal last week. What was the deal with it? What did we end up having to do? Uh, do, 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 do 14. All right, he's a little like rolly, rolly cart. Vika's in. Hey, Vika, thanks for joining the live stream. Thanks for coming back. Tula, sorry about last week. Didn't see you say hi to me until I went back and was watching the stream later to look something up. Oh my God, we are too friendly. I mean, I'm from Minnesota and uh, we're supposed to be really nice, right? Let's see, am I gonna be able to get that? Ah, it's turning, it's turning. I don't wanna have to do that. I don't wanna, I don't wanna have to do that. What am I forgetting here? What am I forgetting? Yeah, that's not gonna let me do that. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna go back to last week and one of the tips somebody gave was to try one of these. Since I got a full engine on here, I'm wondering if this would work. I'm actually just curious because I didn't get a chance to try it last week. We all get distracted, ain't that the truth? Let's see, so if I'm thinking so I want to make sure I put this on the right way. I'm going to be amazed if this works. Yeah, because I'd be pulling. Oh, man. See, sometimes Brian's just not thinking straight. Pull this around there. Yeah, I know I'm trying to hold the rotor in place, dude. I'm trying. I'm trying, man. This might be a cool way to do it. Let's see if I can hold it like that. Ooh, ooh. That felt like that really made that firm for sure. Oops. Now I'm slipping. That worked though. Holy buckets. I'm surprised how well that worked. Yeah, it's all covered with oil though, don't you think? We can try it. Thinking it might 
do that. Let's try this. That's not doing it, but worst case, should be able to. No, nope, that didn't do it. It's like, all, it's because it's, it's got a little bit of oil on it. That's my problem. That's why I put the rag on it. Because now it really just wants to slip around. Oh, come on. Yeah, it just slips. I'm going to try, try it one more time with the rag. See if that works. This would be a cool way to do it. Like, I wish I had a metal, um, a metal um, oil filter wrench. I think that would be super awesome. Tighten that up. <clears throat> Gonna need a little bit more leverage. It's gonna work. I think I just need to go to 3 eighths or go to my half inch, get a little bit of length on it. And then check this out, man. I even got, I didn't organize them quite as good, but I got all my stuff separated into their proper little bins. It's a game changer. It is a game changer just to be able to reach for stuff. All right, put this on extraction mode. I got a lot more extension on this now. Oh, come on. Oops. Tighten that up. Let's try this. Oh, come on. Oh, it's tough. It'd be awesome to have another set of hands. Come on. This is like the worst. Look at how rounded out this is. That 14, I gotta see if I got a little bit better 14. This thing is a mess. Get the angle grinder out again. Yeah. That is always a possibility as well. Not on this one though, we won't. We won't go nuts on this one like that. Just wanna see if I got another 14 laying in here. I got two 15s. Boy, that is just a really ugly, ugly socket that I've got there. I might try, like, can you guys see how terrible this is? I just noticed this. Look how rounded out that is. It's not even sharp corners. I might as well just pitch that one, honestly. Longer wrench. Yeah, we could try that. Kind of want to see if, if this uh, if this trick will work though, because I do feel like it like it would work. If it doesn't work, we'll we'll try something else, of course, because we don't give up here. But I'll try this 14 on here. See if this gives me a little bit of extra room. There, that fits a lot better already. And. I think I'm operating this the right way. Yeah, it's just not holding that good enough. You would think it would bite. Oh, Jesus. That is a booger. That is a booger. We could try the dead blow. Tula, you can't watch the splitting engine. I, I knew that one was gonna bother you. I 100% knew that that video was gonna bother the hell out of you. I was like, you ain't gonna like this. Uh. Yeah, I don't really have a breaker bar. I have a torque wrench. It's a little bit longer. Wait, I do have a breaker bar. Oh my god. Ah, uh, and it's in a three. It's in the half inch though, so it's got this big one on it, which I just don't know if that's going to grab that. 
I just don't think that, I don't really trust this socket. That's kind of the, the problem that I'm having right now. Yeah. I wonder, I wish that this would just hold a little bit tighter. Yep, it's gotta go the other way. So I was doing it right. We'll try it again. I wanna find like a, a metal one. I'm gonna put it up on top so I can really get some. There we go. Now we got the breaker bar. Ah, what a cruddy socket. You can just feel how loose it is. All right, oh, just slips right off. Come on. I think I got it. I think it went. Yes. So that does work. <laughs> that does work. Holy shit. Or holy buckets. Holy buckets. Don't want to have to go and edit that out. Don't want to get any strikes, you know. That worked. So a combination of no rag, wiping things off a little bit, making it work, pulled that right off. That's awesome, cool. What do we got here? Oh man, man you guys are blowing it up right now. I'm, getting, I'm, I'm working too much. Not paying attention to chat. Need a breaker bar, my current one's old motorcycle handle. Right, a breaker bar. Yeah, I've totally forgot I had that big mother. Thank you for the reminder on that. It's been hanging on my pegboard, hidden behind all kinds of stuff. Pushing down easier than lifting. Let's see, kidney, Vika. Oh, the kidney infection. I was like, Kid oh, Vika had a kidney infection? I didn't know that. It's like, no, that gas tank. Yeah, what's going on with that gas tank? You working on that right now? What's holding the starter motor shaft into the small sprocket? We're about to find out, dude. We're about to find out. It should all just slide right off. This sprocket is grooved in. It looks like it just slides right off. And then there's one bolt here holding the starter. We'll get to it for sure. Um, so the other part that I want to do is now we're kind of to that point where we need to pop this rotor off of here. Um, and I wanted to try it because we have the rear axle. So I wanted to see, do I have a rear axle here? Yes. I think like, now I do have the proper tool for this. I put it someplace before the stream and I was like, ooh, I'm gonna need that. So maybe I lost it. Oh, no. Maybe I lost it on purpose because I can't find it right now. Ooh, I just dropped that hammer on my toe. I dropped that hammer on my toe. Oh, that hurt. That hurt, man. Walk it off. Walk it off. Let's see if this actually fits. Yeah, it is. The, the, the threads on this are a little bit mangled. Um, so I'm a little hesitant of putting this one in there because I don't want to muck up the threads. It, like, let's look at it here. See how it's a little bit ground out. It, it, I think it definitely fits for sure. Hey, Nick, welcome to the stream. Got called out for sanding engine mounts during a meeting. <laughs> oh, I gotta love the work from home. S. Garvin, awesome. I've never had luck with those, those strap wrenches. Well, we just did, man. And honestly, that was the first time that thing's been useful other than removing an oil filter from a car. They end up snapping. Mmm, okay. That was the fun part. But yeah, so you can kind of see this is all mangled. So I'm a little hesitant. I'm a little hesitant of using that because, again, hopefully you guys kind of see my point. Like, I don't want to, like, start forcing that in there because it's going to mess up those threads. And I had... God, I set, you know, this is like the most dangerous thing um, when I'm getting ready for live streams. I'm like, oh, I'm going to need this. I'm going to need this. I'm going to need to put this over here. I'm going to need this. I'm going to put this over here. And then I set my parts all up. Oh, I just found it. Thank God. 
thank God I found it. I found the very special tool. So it does look if your rear axle is in really good condition, um, it does look like it will um, work just fine. You need an 18 millimeter wrench to do this. And again, this is just going to go in here. This is a special tool that you need to buy. It's like this. And that's what it said. It said, pop this thing off. Oh, and I'm going to have to hold that darn thing again too, aren't I? I bet. Yeah, that would make sense, because now I'm turning the engine. So back to the strap. Except we're going to position it in the reverse. I think that's what's going on. So this time I'll go this way with it. I can just hold that, hopefully. Oh, yeah, it's just, it's, you got to get it like right in there the right spot it's just a little too oily and of course I'm like right there it's right there man Let's try that oh. God. yeah I can already kind of feel the oil on the uh, on the rotor to that is my biggest issue there has to be like an easy way to do this i mean if the other side cover was on you could put a penny in it and do it that way i suppose but there's got to be an easier way to do this if anybody knows tell me please i'll put it right here and we'll try this Yeah, no, it's just turning it. Just feel that oil. Ah, uh, the penny trick is, um, that's in, um, in the videos, Vika. Um, that is, you put a penny in between the two gears on the opposite side. On the, there's like two gears. You just put a penny in between them and it'll stop the motor. And it's soft enough to where it won't wreck anything like it won't mar anything up yeah this is not working as well for this application here like i wonder like how hard is this can i just hold this with my hand no not that strong i'm strong but i'm not that strong um hmm i don't want to give up on that Impact and strap was my solution. Yeah. Yeah, why'd that get all freaking oily like that? That is super annoying. I wonder, I wonder if I just flip it. Let's see, I think it'd be like this. Try the smooth end maybe. Other way, other way. This is like a mind bender. Trying to figure out like which way this stuff goes. And I also don't like want to break anything. You know, that's kind of the other objective here. It's not breaking stuff. Yeah, that's not gonna work. It doesn't work when you flip the thing around. So that's not gonna work. We, I think we just gotta be patient and make sure this thing bites. Cause man, when it bit before, it bit. I'm gonna do a pull. I think we got it. Yeah, I mean, these things are like torqued on there to a point that, um, I mean, it's kind of like right at the breaking point, you know, to at least at the end of my ability. <laughs> Oh, that's a good point, Lab Rat. Yeah, just position it so it runs against the table. Brilliant. All right. 
I'm gonna carefully pull this all out. Let me give you guys a little different angle. And uh, I didn't want that to happen, but it did. One of the little rollers fell out. Oh God, these damn things. There, this all looks really nice and clean here, good. I'm gonna just put this in a safe location. And it's all slotted, so it will go right back into position. Yeah, there's like a little wobble thing on there. Okay, I'm gonna be very careful with that. I don't wanna mess that up. Now, only thing left is to take this retainer out, and then once we take the retainer out, both of the gears and the screw should come out. That is a 10 millimeter. If I go to my thing, it should be that one. And gosh darn it, it is. Oh my God. Oh my God. My, ser my video series would have been half of the time, maybe even a quarter of the time if I would have used the proper tool on that. So how the hell did that go? Uh, God, am I stupid? I'm not like looking here. Oh, there we go. Boom. Balance is on here. It's like this and then that'll pop out so we've got that and we've got our bolt so i'm gonna go put all this stuff right next to this thing Whew. all right next step is put my gloves back on because i took my gloves off and now my hands are all dirty that's the other thing guys thanks so much for joining the stream guys up to 16 tonight that's awesome i think last week we peaked out at 23 viewers i think it was um, so let's see if we can break that out, man. If you got a friend or something that likes motorcycles and working on stuff, have them join in, hang out, get involved in the chat. This is awesome. Having a blast. We're diving into some kind of new stuff. Man, this should all pull straight off. Bada bing, bada boom. There it is. There it is, guys. We did it. We did it up to 18. I'm telling you, you this, this, uh, this uh, Keep On Wrenching group is amazing. Loving it. All right, I'm going to take this, set this down. Oh, I want like kind of a clean place to put it down. I don't want to lay it down in all the metal filings. So I'll just grab a piece of, just grab a little piece here of a towel. We'll get that laid out there. And again, just always trying to stay as organized as humanly possible when we're working on all this stuff because we do not want to be losing things. I'm sure there's a torque specification when we put all of that back together. So I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, Vika, this thing looks really clean. I'm very optimistic um, that this is not going to be a huge deal. Um, I now knock on wood, knock on wood, um, but I'm feeling really good about it because it has been, been pretty breezy so far. I mean, a couple of bolts that we had to kind of get finicky with but I mean, if that's, if that's it, that's pretty, pretty damn great. All right, so I'm just gonna start kind of making a little pile here of stuff that I've been working on tonight. Goal number one is to get more organized. I think like a little rolly tool cart would be really nice. So that's what I've kind of got my eyes on. And then, ooh, I also have my eye on a CB175, I think it was. Somebody wants a few hundred dollars for it. Not that far away from me. It's been sitting there a while. Doesn't appear that anybody wants it. It'd be cute. It'd be perfect bike for my wife. Get her into riding. How cool would that be? So it looks like there are just two, um, two long pins. No, actually, that is not mounted to, so those, no, those long pins are actually part of the starter. So that is not what's happening here. Ooh, this could end up being a little bit bigger problem than I anticipated because I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to drill this out. I don't think that there's any way around it because this thing needs to slide out and it's not going to because of that post. So I have one thing I wanna check here, is this open? Yeah, it looks like, okay, so it doesn't feel like this is broke off, it's just the one. Um, yeah, it's damaged, Vika. Um, here, let me spin it around here. 
We've got two uh, broken posts here on this nut. There's a broken bolt right here. Let me get you in right here. Broke code. So we got to get that out. Yeah, I hope the starter is fine. Um, I can try and figure out like a, a like figure out how to test it. I was looking at some of that earlier today too. Um, but yeah, there's a broken bolt right here that I need to get out and extract, and then I could put it all right back together. Quite honestly, um, I'm not too worried about that. I feel like the cameras are having a little bit of a struggle focusing tonight for some reason. Yeah, yeah. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I was hoping. I, I guess I wasn't really thinking, but either way, it's got to come out. So, yeah, we're going to have to do that. Because I can't move it this way if that's holding me up right here. Okay, that, that is something that we cannot dremel. That is something we're going to have to drill, get it out, and then we'll have to, have to, hopefully we can get it out, and then hopefully we don't have to tap it and get it back in there. Tula, see you in a few. All good, man. Grab the wood rough key and don't lose it. Wood rough key. What is the wood rough key? We'll ask him when he gets back. Yeah, way harder to disassemble for sure. Yeah, I've never put one back on, so that'll be something we'll have to do. All right. Yeah, I'm going to have to just drill this out. I don't have a choice unless you guys have any other ideas. It's gonna have to come out. That's a bummer. Mm. Yeah, what a bummer. Uh, but now that I'm thinking about it, it's like there was no way around this, you know, in order to get this to, to work out. So, because I want it to be right, I don't want to just like drill part of the way, you know. I want to do it right. So, okay, grab my drill bits. Grab my drill. And I do have a little bit of a guide here to see kind of how wide it should go. But, oh, man, it, that is heartbreaking to have to drill this because it's going to be impossible to get it out. Uh. I mean, then we're going to have to try an extractor set, and I have never been successful using an extractor. Hmm. Just trying to think, trying to MacGyverize a solution here a little bit to get this out, because if I drill it out, I'm not going to have anything to get it out with. And I'm going to need a lot of meat on the end of this bolt in order to get it out, because obviously it broke when it was coming out. So it wasn't gonna be very cooperative in the first place. Yeah, there's no way to grab it with a vice grip because let me see if you guys can see clearly. Like if I drill this out, this is how it is. Oh, come on, focus. So here it is, the culprit is poking through the bracket. This bracket is a part of the starter, right? You can kind of see it move. If I drill that out, I'm gonna have nothing to grab that with. So this is actually a really big pain in the butt um, that this isn't, um, this, is, yeah, this is a big pain in the butt. Um, I wish I had another starter to see. I'm sure it's just flat on the other side there. Hmm. <laughs> And that is part of the case. That does not come out. So I've not seen another option here. Yeah, the extractors with the reverse threading. Yeah, S. Garvin, see how it's, it's complicated, this issue. It's, it's gotten a lot more complicated now, just in like the last five minutes, now that I'm looking at it. I thought it was just going to be, cool, we'll get the starter out. It should lift right out. But there's not enough room here to tilt it out. It, I was hoping it would like just kind of teeter out and pull out. But it, it needs a good half an inch to move. And I'm not seeing that much because if you come over to this side, 
can see the starter motor, how it works inside of here. That whole piece is moving, so I can't tilt it because it's in the cast. It's in the casting, so I can't do it. David, hey, good timing, man. What do you got for me here? Use your Dremel and flatten two sides to get a wrench on it with some heat. Well, two sides of what? Because my target is, is inside of this block. You know, like I can't grab it. If, if I could get a vice grip on it, if I could do something like that, that would be no problem at all. But it's built into a bracket and the screw is inside there. I can't, I can't get at it. In the extreme can remove the long screws and take the end of the starter off. So yeah, Anthony, I was looking at that too. Um, but again, I can't move this, I can't move this back. Here, let me turn this. This will turn into a little bit of a puzzle. I could pull these out and the starter could come apart, but I don't, I still don't think I have enough to move back with. You know what I mean? Because this is, I wonder how deep this goes in here, but either way, I don't have enough to pull back on. And the bummer of the deal is, is like, I was like, okay, well maybe I could just notch this out on the end and pull it out. But that's not gonna that's not gonna get me anywhere because I have to go that way. I have to this whole unit has to come out that way, and that bolt is holding me up from getting to the promised land. I don't think taking these two long bolts is gonna help me get that. I don't think it is. Yeah, because I still need I still need motion to go this way to pull this all apart. Yeah, that's not going to help me. I, ha I think I have to just drill this. Oh, man, that breaks my heart, though, because I'm going to try. Uh, I'm getting crazy here. Like, it, I've got just a little bit. Like, if I could keep just a, a, a like, man, just, a, just enough that I could grab it with a vice grip. The thing is, I just don't want to drill down too far. So, I think what I could do, let me see if I can get this in there. Let me see if I can just build in a little bit of a, a buffer here. Yeah, the bummer of it is that it's just locked into this side and it's gotta come out that way. But that got me quite, that, that might have gotten me enough to get a vice grip around it. And it might be enough for me to violently pull the piece out. So let's take a look at my bits, see what I got here. All right, that's not it. I'm actually gonna go, I'm actually gonna do this. I'm gonna think, I'm gonna, gonna be thinking here because I don't wanna screw this up because it would really suck to screw this up. I'm gonna go into this. Yeah, just get enough wiggle out of it so I can get it. You know, does, does that make sense? Like if I could get 80% of it or 90% of it. All right, what's going on here? All right, this is not the one. Okay, well, first and foremost, let's stay organized. Let's not panic during a, a moment like this. Put all my bolts back in the bag and put them back in where they need to be because these are all brand new bolts. They don't need to just be laying out here because then they're all going to get mixed up. And then it's just going to create another problem <laughs> later on down the road. Up to 21 viewers right now, guys. We are just two away from matching our live stream record. Two. Two away. Call your friends. Tell them, hey, there's this crazy guy doing some wrenching um, on the internet. And uh, while you're here, if you're new to the channel, be sure to sign up to the Keep On Wrenching community group on Facebook. Go and do it. I want to see some new members here tonight. Um, awesome opportunity to go and do that. This is awesome. We're up to 21. Absolutely fabulous. Fabulous. All right. This is fun. I'm getting fired up. I kind of like these little challenges. Yeah, I just want to salvage enough of it, Vika, um, that I could get something around it to pull it out because the head broke. So here we have the starter motor, and these are E. 
I love these charts from Common Motor with their with their tool kits. They give you the length of the bolt and the letter and all that. So here's my starter motor here, the two bolts. One of these bolts is broken on mine. So it looks like it's E. It's gonna be this. So it's one of these bolts. So now I can figure out exactly what size drill bit I need to pull that off. So now I can go back if I change my camera and take you guys with me. That'd be nice. Uh, let's see, that one's just a little too small. Just trying to find the right one. Now if I have to like drill this out and I gotta re-tap it, it's not the end of the world, but still it's just like another damn thing that you gotta do. I don't really want to. The other thing here is that this is aluminum and things could go awry very quickly I think that looks about right to me with the threads. I wish I had kind of a happy medium. I'm not really seeing a happy medium between these two. I think I'll go with this one. I'd rather go smaller than, than, than bigger for sure. So yeah, that's gonna have a brand new bolt in it eventually. But yeah, this is what's hung me up is that bolts broke off right here and I can't get at it. That's the problem. Gerald, left-hand drill bits. Most broken bolts will come out without extractor. My second choice would be a slide hacksaw blade in the space available. Hacksaw, great. Uh, Gerald, that's a really good suggestion. Um, I, ju I do not have anything like that. Um, I don't have, yeah, like a little hacksaw blade. That would, that would work. I just don't have anything like that. I have some, um, I guess I have some hacksaw blades, but they're like for an electric hacksaw. So I'm not sure that those would really serve my purpose here tonight, but I do, I like, where, I like the way you're thinking on that um, 100%. Yeah, I don't have those, those are out in the garage. So that's okay. Those, those would be like just those little shorty ones for like a skill saw or what are they, like a little, little hack saw. So that's not going to work. But I like it. If you don't go beyond the beginning of the engine cast, you might still be able to use reverse extractor, right? Don't drill beyond. <laughs> I know, dude, that's the problem. Uh, but ultimately, I would love to get enough space built into this that I would be able to just grab it with a vice grip or notch it or something and, and work it that way. But I don't know, man, this could turn out to be a much bigger deal than uh, I want, than I was bargaining for. Wrap some duct tape around the end of the blade and go for it. Chainsaw, Brad, come on, come on. That, that, that's way too aggressive. Chainsaws are for wood. All right, I'm just gonna see. Part of me is wondering. Okay, well, let's get in here. Oh, let me give you guys, a, I always gotta remember, sometimes my hands just like destroy your entire viewing experience and kind of defeats the purpose of everything. Yeah, punch it. There ain't much there to punch. Yeah, it's like a, it's a, it's a, it's crooked too, besides inside. So it's not really a flat surface. You know what I mean? So it's all jagged on the inside. If it was flat, yeah, the punch would make total sense, but it's just, it's not really flat. Let's see if that helped. See if it gave it some place to go. Yep, the other thing that I kind of want to do right now, so I kind of got a little bit of a groove there. Somebody in the chat just made a good point as well. Um, I'm gonna do something here just to make sure I don't go too far. 
I want to mark this with where I want to go. So I want to go to about here. I don't want to go any further than this. That's all I need. Don't want to go any further than this because then I think I might be able to actually just get it out without tapping it. Uh, it's just jagged. Might be need to dremel it out just a little. And two, like when you slide into the aluminum, it gets pretty soft. It gets pretty soft pretty quick. Pilot, a smaller pilot hole, we could do that. That might be worth it because it's a sliding around quite a bit. We'll do that. I'll keep this one out, but at least I don't want to. I'm glad that I measured that depth a little bit. So that was a good suggestion. Who said that? Duct tape. Somebody said duct tape or something. Duct tape it and go for it or something like that. Uh, I don't see it. Yeah, reverse extractor. I'll have to show you guys the kit that I have. Um, I've never, I've never ever been successful using it, <laughs> ever. You can't fit a Dremel cut off wheel back in there, the space you created with the plastic knife. Possible, Brian, but again, I'm gonna take out any opportunity of getting the bolt out. I'm gonna like pretty much eliminate that opportunity for myself if I do that. I feel like I, I need as much length as I can get. Uh, having that crooked in there like that, oh, it sucks. It's like, because it's broken off at an edge. Come on. I'm trying to drill straight. You know, I'm going to just breathe. I'm going to think here for a little, a little bit. I commend you, B, for doing this live. Stressful enough without all this backseat watching. No shit. <laughs> right? But that's what I kind of enjoy about the series and stuff, too, is, I mean, this, we all go through this stuff. It's like, I don't, I don't care who you are. I mean, you can be an expert mechanic, and you're still going to have to deal with stuff like this. i got to move this so I can get a little bit more, more angle on the punch here. I'm thinking about getting my Dremel out and flattening the inside of this because that's what's killing me right now. That felt, that felt like a pretty good punch there though. And actually it looked like a little bit of it might have flaked off, which would be amazing. Ask yeah, Garvin. <laughs> Use a rubber mallet and beat the out of it until the bolt breaks. Yeah, I think what I, I just hit it now, I think it might have broke off that little edge. Of course, it's at this weird angle here, too. Just got to go for it. There's nothing to bite to. Nothing to bite to. Oh, like you can feel it in there. It'll, it'll want to go. So I'm going to try to come down. It would also help if my drill bit was uh, in straight, if any of you noticed that. Yeah, the bummer of it too is that feels like one hell of a hard bolt. There, I got it. Got a little groove. I should be able to follow that with this bigger one now. So Tula, thanks for forcing me to go back and do a pilot. Thank you Vika for saying, you know, put a punch on it. All good stuff. All good stuff, guys. All right, so I got my depth marked. You guys got a good view of this mayhem that's happening here. 23 viewers, we are tied 
for the most ever on the stream. We are tied for most ever on the stream. One more viewer and we got ourselves a record tonight. Thank you so much for joining the stream. Hope you guys are having fun. We're getting into it. We're getting into it. All right. You guys got a good view. I got a good view. Get you over here just a little bit. Here we go. Let's go for it. Getting down there. A little more, a little more, a couple millimeters. All right, so that's good. So now the next step on this ordeal, I think what I'm gonna do is now that I know that I got the bolt kind of all the way cleared out, um, I'm gonna go and find how big this hole is in the, like the mounting bracket itself. And now I can just drill this whole section out to make sure it's clear. That's pretty damn close. I made a big mistake and I got a standard set. Oh, that's perfect though. I got a standard set of drill bits when I bought them. I don't know what the hell I was thinking um, when I did that. This wasn't the thing. I was like, oh, I need drill bits. Oh, drill bits, drill bits. Ooh, ooh. And I just bought them. And then I brought them home and I was like looking at them. I was like, what the hell? This is the dramatic content I needed in my life. <laughs> to a lot easier to backseat wrench, as Vika says, and do it myself. Sharp bit, maybe add some lubricant to it. Doesn't snap off, go slow. Brad, good point. Little lube um, wouldn't be a bad idea. I think I got it here though on the aluminum because I should be through the heavy stuff. I just need to make absolutely sure that I am straight and true. A big chunk of it came out. Go a little bit more. All right. Can you guys hear like, hear like my heartbeat? My heartbeat's like, it's just pounding right now. It's really close. I, I think I have enough to like teeter just a little bit. <sighs> I don't want to get like so violent with it though. Because it is in that casting. I think I'm there. Man, like looking inside of here, I feel like it's, it's there. Like I'm about as far as I can go. Again, I don't want to pry on this crazily because this aluminum, this will break very easily. Especially on this little dog. So what I kind of want to do is get behind, not on the tab, pull it out. Not too worried about the back side of this engine. Oh, I wish I had two right hands that operated efficiently and equally. See how much gap I've got here? I've got enough to grab it. I'd hate to cut any more off of that though. Get behind it. Can we get it? Come on, baby. Come on. Because uh, now when I'm doing this, this is causing pressure here. <laughs> but I think I got an idea. Grab a little rubber mallet here. I've got some back pressure here to pull this forward. Just lightly hitting. Lightly hitting that starter, just so I'm not really hitting it that hard. It's just not quite enough. And again, I don't want to pry on that tab because I'm really scared of breaking that tab on the actual starter. God, 
you guys probably have a better view of what the hell I'm trying to do than I do. Uh, I got quite a bit of bolt there yet. <clears throat> Super close. Super close. I think I do have to drill it down just a little bit more. But I think I'm on the right track. I think I'm on the right track here. Oh, what did I do with the drill? Okay, we're gonna go a little bit more. 24, that is a record. <laughs> Welcome to the stream, everybody. 24 viewers on keepitwrenching.com. Uh, that's a new record. Thanks so much for showing up to the stream. If you haven't already, make sure you join Keep On Wrenching community group. Um, we got an awesome group of people going on over there. And uh, real quick, you can support the stream, learn all kinds of stuff over on keeponwrenching.com, sign up for the email newsletter, grab yourself a copy of my favorite manual, the Chilton manual uh, for CB350s, Honda Twins, free download right there. Also, if you'd like to support the channel, you can always donate or check out some of the cool merchandise in the store. We're up to 25 right now. We're crushing it, guys, we're crushing it. This is amazing. Um, I'm wearing one of the shirts. I got a bunch of other stuff, but I don't care about any of that. I'd rather see you there. Uh, Mike, Mike wants in. Let's get Mike in. Mike, you're in. Thanks so much for watching the stream. This is amazing. We got to keep wrenching. We got to keep going, guys. We got to, can't, can't, can't be mucking around with that stuff. We got to keep working. We got to get this darn thing out of there. We're going to get it out. I can feel it. You know, I'm noticing something over here that might be another possible way for us to do this. Let me move camera, give you a look. So I think if I could get like a big socket or something in place, um, I might be able to help assist that a little bit more other than hitting on this post. Cause I was hitting on the post really lightly. Looks like I might be able to do this cause that whole unit is moving and the whole unit's gonna back out of there. So I'm gonna try this one more time, guys. I'm gonna go get my long, 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 long screwdriver. My big meaty one, where are you, buddy? Where is my giant long screwdriver? What was I using it on last? Here it is. Boom. I'm gonna get this in here like this, back in behind, just like we were doing. <laughs> What a crazy adventure this turned out to be, but this is fun. This is fun stuff, man. <sighs> yeah, there's not really an end cap. It's, it looks like it's a part of this, it's part of this, it's part of the starter, but I need to get something big. I need something pretty meaty to get around it, it's pretty big. So, oh, this might be this might be just the ticket. We got a giant one right here. And once you know, that'll, that'll sit right on here. Just like that. Man, thanks so much for joining the stream tonight, guys. You guys are, are motivating me um, to keep on, keep on going here. I might've just called it and went and watched some Netflix or something if I was just sitting here alone. So what's the most, what's the most fun angle for you? Kind of feel like that's kind of cool. Get you in there like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this behind here. That's gonna give me some leverage, but I need the leverage up top like that. There we go. Now, how in the hell? See, here's where I need four hands to be able to do this. Part of me wants to just drill a damn hole in my rubber mallet so I don't hit that, but I hit that. So I don't want to hit the, hit the gears. Okay, so what we're gonna do, this is a perfect opportunity for the bungee strap. So I'm gonna get this under here. I need to grab a bungee. Cowabunga bungee, where is it? Got a bunch of them. Got a bunch of them over here. Just wrecking my beautiful clean shop. Trying to find a single bungee here. Oh, come on. 
Wow, that's a rat nest from hell. Trying to get one of these out of here. Come on. Come on, come on. There we go, got one. So I think what I can do is try to get some pressure coming out on this. If I go at an angle down here like this, let me see if I can show you guys what I'm gonna try and do here. Get you up. Lots of tricky angles tonight, guys. Lots of tricky angles. But I wanna kinda of show you my, my, my thought process here of what I'm trying to do. I need to pull this out gently. So I'm gonna put this over here on my wrench, or on, on this to just pull this out. And that's gonna be enough to do it. But at least I've got some pressure. I could actually increase some of that pressure. Yeah, it pulled it, it pulled it just a little bit. See what I'm doing here? So, that, so now I've got my pull out, it's lifting it. I should be able to now use the socket Is it moving? The other thing I'm gonna try and do here real quick. Man, don't you love it though? Like these little challenges that we get into here. Hit it with a little bit of the deep creep. And then, da, 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 da. I'm gonna get my putty knife in here. I'm just gonna twist this just a little bit there's any kind of gunk or debris, which is quite possible because this is on the front of the bike. It should slide out. I got a lot of lift here. I'm trying to see if, I can't find my flashlight. Let's see, oh, I got my phone. Let me grab my phone here, 26, 26, new record. Thanks so much for the supporting the stream. Uh, this is awesome. This is a fun stream tonight. I'm having a friggin' blast. This is awesome. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna look here. I wanna get enough tension on this so like at a certain point, I know I'm clear. I'm still not clear. It's tough to see. I would love to preserve at least that much. So let's drill. Let's actually hold off and drill and come into this because if I can get it to where that point is, I'll have plenty there, I think, to grab on and extract that without stuff having to get super, super, super crazy. Whoa, everything's falling all over. Yeah, this is fun. I, I, I think that's kind of, I, I enjoy working on these bikes because there are just little puzzles. There are so many little puzzles that you gotta kinda work yourself through on these projects. So let me get you repositioned. We're gonna go ahead and just drill just a little bit deeper. Not much. I do not wanna go much. Again, oh, it's tough. Nice and level, super level. Now, is that aluminum or is that actually what we're going for here? I just want to be able to get this to a point to where I can pull that. Ah, uh, I got it. Okay, so back to the bungee strap. I drilled, wow, I stopped right at the right, right time. Woohoo! Okay, I'm loving this. Loving it. Yeah, I don't have a hacksaw or a file. That's the problem. I love that hacksaw idea as well. I think we could have got it but I think this is gonna work. So I'm gonna go ahead again, just gonna kind of tension this out so I have all my hands. Get that up underneath here, lift it out, wrap this around. Oops. I get this in the right spot, there we go. 
lift it out. I gotta get over here, I can't see. I think this is gonna work, guys. I'm feeling pretty confident. I think I'm gonna go the other way with my bungee. Yeah. Yep. I'm just gonna go like this, get my bungee around this. I think it's clear. I do believe that it's clear. And I think I'm just gonna grab this and tie this over to this motor port here. And grab this one, put it over here. So, give you guys a little overview. 26 is amazing. So I'm just using this leverage here to pull this up just enough. So I'm clearing it. And I basically just got the bungee up and around, tied around the motor, pulling it that way. And we should be good on this. Now it's just a matter of driving that thing out. I'm gonna refer to the manual here real quick just to make sure I'm not missing a step of getting this thing out. I would think that one of you would have said, hey, Brian, you gotta do this first in order to get it out. So I think I'm good. Disconnect, remove, let's see. Back to the book. All right. Uh, remove alternator rotor, blah, blah, blah. Remove starter sprocket. We did that. Remove the two screws, which secure the starter motor. We got that. And tap the starter out of the case. That's what it literally says, is tap the starter out of the case. What do you think, guys? <laughs> we gonna do this? Let's freaking do this. Let's knock this out. I think, I think this is gonna work. Let's do this. I wanna make sure that I've got clearance here. And if I don't have clearance here, no, I got clearance. Yeah, there's clearance there. Whoo, okay. Oh, this would be a huge victory to do this. So now I've got that over on this side. It looked like it moved. It looked like it moved to me. Definitely moving, guys. It is definitely moving. I still got a little gap. Definitely moving, slowly but surely. And I just wanna make sure I've got gap. And I'm not beating on it, I'm just. Tapping it, and it's moving, it's moving. We've got a little bit of gap over here. Whew. Uh, cable's not connected, it is disconnected, it's just hanging. It's just hanging here, it's not connected. It's just stuck in there, I can't get it out. You know, it's back in there. But we got movement, ladies and gentlemen. We got a little bit, but we got a long ways to go. A long ways to go, but we are clear and it is moving. So again, I think this is just one of those parts where patience is going to be really, 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 really key as we're going through this. All right, so maybe keep it going. Again, being as gentle as possible because this is aluminum. And you do not want to be breaking aluminum, like at all. <laughs> do not want to do that. I want to see if I can just start pushing it off. Mm. This is a challenging one. It is super close. What this is also kind of telling me a little bit is that this would be an awesome opportunity to do some like starter rebuild motor uh, kind of videos and stuff. Still not as good as the piston rings. Yeah, the piston rings, man. Those, uh, those are the worst. Just wanna make sure I'm not getting like wedging myself in here. Minimum pressure. That broken bolt is a real bugger because it's adding a lot of tension, you know, to getting this thing out. A lot of tension. 
but I feel very confident in being able to get that, get that out. If I could just be patient. I'm gonna start hitting it on the case here. Let's see, man, I wish I had, ah, a little piece of wood or something would work. Get myself a little bit of leverage. Well, this ain't a little, this ain't a little piece of wood. We'll see if that'll help. I want my screwdriver. So now that's gonna really impede my progress. Gotta set that back up. But that is a good sign, I think, because that means the darn thing's moving. Yep. Right there. We've moved it enough to where it's not going back in the hole, it's just dragging kind of along the whole thing. Try to get as little pressure on this as possible. This is actually working out really, really well, this little bungee strap. I wish I had just a short little dowel or a little piece of wood. That, that long one's killing me right now. Ah, asking you shall receive. Perfect. All right, there's my rubber hammer. There we got it, it moved nice that time. Oops, broke the board. Let's go down to this side. Try to work it around as best I can. It's coming, slowly. Slowly but surely. There we go, ooh, that, ooh. You know when you get that one swing? 27 new record viewers on the stream tonight. You guys are incredible. You guys are incredible. Guys and gals, everybody on the stream, this is awesome. We're gonna get this thing. You know that one time when you hit it and it moves? Like it, was, it didn't, didn't just inch around, it actually went. Get you over here, man. This is slick. I'm gonna remember that little trick. Give that a little bump. There we go. There we go. Okay, I still need a, just a little bit more. There we go. We got it, guys. We got it, guys and ladies. We got it. Boom. Wow, that freaking worked. There's that starter cable. Boom. You know what? I, I, I don't care. Um, I'm pretty proud of that one. <laughs> I am pretty proud of that little amount of work on that. So here's what I was trying to preserve. I was trying to preserve just enough of that broken bolt right here that we can get it off right here. Now, <laughs> right? Oh, I love the, the, the emojis and emotes, man. That's awesome. That was huge. Put a couple little nicks in the, in the case, but that's no big deal. I'm fine with that. But we got it, and I think our chances are going to be a lot better now of extracting that. Boy, I want that, that. 29! We're breaking records all night, baby. This is amazing. Oh, this, this was a huge win right here. This <laughs> a collective sigh of relief. Absolutely. But it totally worked. It 100% worked getting that pressure on that, drilling that out just a little bit. Whew, I'm pulling that out. Boy, I wish I wasn't doing a beer-free January. I would have a beer right now. <laughs> All right, now the next challenge. We do not want to break this. We do not want to break this extracting this because that would suck. That would suck a lot, actually. So, deep creep. And I think I got to get the heat. I think I gotta get the heat. What do you guys think? What's the best way to get this out of there? Brian T, welcome to the stream. Um, we are getting that broken bolt off that starter. And I tell you what, this turned out, turned into being a, being a hell of a rigmarole to get that out. That was a tough one. Go back, watch the, watch the stream if you're just joining. I think that was a, a fantastic effort. Thanks to everybody who contributed ideas on getting that out. Heat the surrounding metal, correct, Clement. 
Good, good, good call. Good call. Thanks for chiming in with that. Huh. Yeah, do a heat gun or would we do propane? Clement, which one would you do? Would you do a heat gun, just a heat gun, or would you do propane around? Uh, all I have is a propane torch. That's the best I can do um, down here in my basement. I want to give myself the greatest chance of pulling this thing out. Do I notch it and, and try the impact? Do I just put a vice grip on it and try to grab it? What do you guys think? I'm very, very curious. Because I could Dremel notch it, but it's pretty thin. It's this, I, I would only notch it, I think, if it, was, if it was a head of a bolt. Propane would work. All right. We can do that. And then I do think I need to go and take a quick little walk and grab my vice grips. So guys, bear with me while I, I take a little stroll because the vice grips are gonna be my best bet on this and they happen to be out in the garage. So I'm gonna walk and uh, go and grab my vice grips. It's one of the downsides of having two work spots because stuff gets kinda, kinda scattered around, but luckily I know right where they are. Hey, there's the 72, there's the 70, both hanging out, laying around. And I got my vice grips. Go back inside. And I think we're going to be victorious. I, I just want to slow down. You know, I don't want to just clamp on and start pulling on it because if I break that, it's going to suck. You know, because now then I've got to drill and tap and I'd rather not have to do that. Thanks for hanging with me. <laughs> there we are. We're back. We're back, we're back. I got vice grips. I got two different kinds of vice grips. Boom, we're in business. I got a propane torch. I'm only gonna heat that. Airwolf sounder. 50 bucks coming in from Dave. Dave, thanks so much. Thanks so much for donating to the stream tonight. Firing off that Airwolf sounder. Airwolf is probably one of the first shows that I remember kind of as a kid very vividly. Um, thanks so much for supporting the stream. I really, really appreciate it. Um, fantastic. This is an amazing group. Um, guys, if you haven't already, <laughs> sign up for the Keep On Wrenching community group on Facebook. Would love to see you there. All right. Propane time, baby. Let's do it. Let's heat this up. I don't have a ton of propane. So we're just going to heat tip of the blue and just try to heat this piece up the secret mountain layer absolutely airwolf was freaking cool i built like the little model kits and stuff like that i had a i had a buddy of mine he, he uh, was asking me about the motorcycles and all that stuff and he goes did you like by any chance build model model kits like scale model kits when you were growing up and i was like oh yeah i, I freaking I freaking love those things. They're amazing. And he's like, yeah, basically you're just, all you're doing with these motorcycles is building like adult model kits. And I was like, yeah, probably right, bud. Love the shirt, man. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Yeah, shirts are in. Got a whole bunch. I got some other merch I can show you guys today too. But I, I was really, I'm really liking the quality of it. I, I, I mean, I'm kind of going a little bit overboard here probably. I don't know how hot I should be trying to get this, but I'm trying to avoid the bolt itself and just trying to heat up the aluminum around here. The bummer about aluminum though is that it cools quick, so you gotta work fast. But I think I'm just gonna go for the vice grip and see if we can get that to crack. Because if we can get it to crack, that would be amazing. Thanks again to Dave for the, the $50 coming in on the donation, that is so huge, so huge. All right, just trying to avoid all this. Google A-Team, MacGyver, or Knight Rider, way better shows, no way. I, I never, I, Knight Rider was fun, um, A-Team was a lot of fun, 
But something about MacGyver and Airwolf um, always resonated with me growing up. Knight Rider was okay. But I've never really been like a car guy necessarily. Um, but the helicopter was way cool. And I was totally into that. Airwolf, Stringfellow Hawk, and Ernest Borgenine. What was his name in the thing? What was, what was his name in the show? Ha <laughs> ha we got it guys. You know, I think taking those extra little precautions, you know, heating the deep creep, slowing down. I think just slowing down, pacing yourself and not diving right into this. Um, got this got this bolt out. We got it. Uh, boom. Bam. Two hours, thirteen minutes to get that out. Well, not totally, but it probably did take us an hour and a half just to get that, that thing out of there. Yeah, that freaking did it. We did it. That's huge. This is gonna go in the special bin. Yeah, I've never been like a crazy, I was really into Jeep Wranglers for a while, but that was like more in like my 20s. I was into Mustangs when I was in high school and stuff like that, but um, you know, so I was thinking, oh, well, we could just slap this damn thing back together. But honestly, um, I, I, my, I've got this off, so I might as well take the time to like clean all of this and make sure that that's all good, right? So probably not going to put that all back together today. But uh, yeah, I think that was a pretty darn positive, positive action that we just had there. Um, that's beautiful. What a beautiful thing. That is impressive. We got it. What was the other thing I was going to do on this engine tonight? Um, well, this took a lot longer than I can, had, had really anticipated, to be quite honest with you. I think I'm going to take a, I think I'm going to sit down here for just a second. Let's catch up on some chat. Let's organize. Let's chill out a little bit because, uh, honestly, uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty damn proud of myself right now. I'm pretty proud of myself <laughs> and I'm working in this, this keep on wrenching mug. It's getting dirty. Look at that. That's how, that's how your shop mug should look. Should be all dirty and looking nasty. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, car wise. I don't know. I think if I could like just have like the most perfect little, little vehicle, I think I would love to find like a Jeep Comanche pickup. I think one of those old Jeep Comanche pickups, all restored and freaking operational, would be amazing. I think they were called a Jeep Comanche. They didn't make them that many years, but they're really cool little pickup trucks. All right, I'm gonna put some tools away and just kind of watch chat, guys. Tell me, what are you guys working on? What are you working on in the chat? Um, what do you think of that? My mind's blowing, my mind's blowing. That we actually got that apart, man. That is incredible. Whew. There's always a way. There, there's a way. And honestly, your, your tips on this one definitely helped me out. Because I think, again, I would have rushed a little bit. I might not have taken some of the precautions that I should have. And I might have run into a situation. Because it could have been a whole deal. Whole different deal. WRX. Brad. WRX guy. Those are free. Pretty darn cool cars. Love me a Subaru. Lab Rat, this is the Apocalypse engine or your recent bike you picked up. This is the Apocalypse bike engine. This is the one that's going to go in there for show. That's where that is going. So, yeah, I mean, we could get all crazy. We can clean all this up. You know, the, the starter motor, a um, lot of cleaning to do. Holy buckets. And again, this just kind of pushed the envelope a little bit more for me on this too because... I haven't gone that far. I've never taken the starter motor off. I never had to do that before. Honestly, on the 72 in the YouTube series, that one, I just gambled and was like, ah, it's fine. Because I'd done so much on it. I was like, you know, if it's the starter, that's, a, that's that whatever. I, I literally rolled the dice to see if that was working on it. 
<laughs> I could get a WRX. I can get anything, but I'd like a Jeep Comanche pickup. That's what I'd love. Manifold boots. Yes. Yes, I actually got my manifold boots from Common Motor, and that reminds me that was the other thing that I wanted to freaking do tonight. Because I did get... Um, I don't want to put them on yet, but I want to try and get them off. I do have two brand new uh, manifold boots or intake manifold boots right here. I did get them from Common Motor, I think. Or maybe I got these from 4 into 1. I might have got them from 4 into 1 because these are, uh, these are Honda. So, yeah, Brian, a man needs a truck. Or the other thing that I'm looking at, at, at getting, honestly, is a... a um, God, what the hell was it called? Uh, uh, some kind of a damn van. Something Connect. City Connect. City Connect van or something like that. They're like a small... It's, I measured or, or looked up the measurements. It's like no longer than my Subaru Outback. So I'd have a van that I could just roll, you know, bikes into the back of. What was it called? This City Connect, I think is what they were called. I, I don't remember. And they're pretty cheap. Like you could... You know, it, it wasn't like a crazy price on that stuff. So I want to get these manifold boots off. That's what I want to do. And I do think that this would be an awesome opportunity to test out the electric torque as well. I'm glad you guys, Ford Transit Connect. That's what it was. That's what it was. Ford Transit Connect. Really cool little van, man. Like I could become a van guy and then I could like turn that into uh, being like a van camper. And then being like a tailgater or something. I, I, I don't know. I just think I could have a lot of fun uh, working on something like that. So what we want to do is we want to get our intake boots off now. Let's just get them off because I'm going to put new ones on them. Um, the reason why you put new ones on, I think, is just to avoid problems when you're trying to tune things up at the very end of all this. Because if you have air leaks and these are old boots or they leak, um, it's, it's kind of a... Kind of a bummer of a deal. So I just replace them. They're not cheap. I think they're like 40 bucks a crack to do, but it's definitely, you know, I, I think it's worth it. If you can, if you're going in on it, you know, you might as well um, repair and fix everything that you possibly can while you're in there. I mean, you're going this far. I guess that's kind of how I think about it. All right, that is gonna, it looks like these are threes. Three GIS Japanese industrial straight. Man, we're hanging at 26 viewers tonight. Um, this is amazing. Thanks so much for joining the live stream. Keep on wrenching.com to learn more. Um, do all of that. So, yeah, just uh, if you haven't already and you're new to the stream, be sure to check out the Keep on Wrenching community group on Facebook. We got it. We're building a hell of a group over there. It's a, it's a heck of a lot of fun. Also, you can go and support the channel, uh, keeponwrenching.com. Or most importantly, go grab yourself a free download of, in my opinion, the best manual that's out there. The Honda 360 or 350, 360 Twins manual here. 28? You got to be kidding me. This is amazing. Uh, free download. Go get it, guys. It is the most complete manual that you're going to need. You can go peruse some of the builds. You can check out all the videos and a bunch of articles, lots of stuff coming. Most importantly, if you have not already as well, sign up for the newsletter. And if you do care to support the channel, you can donate or you can go check out some of this amazing merchandise uh, hanging out on the channel too. So I'm having a blast. I'm loving this stuff. Uh, Keep on wrenching community group is, uh, I think we're up to 82 now. Let me refresh here real quick. 82 members in the Keep on Wrenching group. I never thought that was going to happen, man. That is rad. Thank you so much for the support on the channel. All right, let's knock these bad boys out. Again, it, it might be overkill, okay? But I, I think like while we're in here, let's just let's just do it. Let's do it right. Because and the other thing, guys, is that this is the apocalypse bike. This needs to be a reliable bike. All right. Needs to be reliable. We can't have stuff breaking down on us. It's gotta be rock solid. That's kind of like part of the reason why I was really getting into the posilock connectors on the wiring. Um, because I was just like, you know what? We we, we might be doing some craziness on this bike. So we want it to be super, super, super reliable. Uh, Brian, you love your hoodie? That is awesome to hear, dude. I, I mean, I got the t-shirt and I'm wearing the t-shirt tonight, obviously. Um, I love the, the, the material. I, I was really nervous that they were gonna be like real cheap, but it's actually good stuff. I'll show you guys the jacket. I picked up one of the 
kind of the rain slickers um, off of there as well. So, uh, da, 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 yeah, add them to the list for sure. Uh, da, 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 ba, 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 da, da. If anybody's got a lead on a, on a Jeep um, Comanche pickup, let me know. So these are usually pretty troublesome. So I'm curious to see if uh, we can get these out because, you know, this stuff gets hot. This gets pretty hot in this area. Um, so stuff likes to kind of weld up. So we'll see. We might have to go to the manual to the hand impact on these. But let's see if we can get them out. I'm going to give it some good pressure, pull back on it. Oh, wow, that came right out. That one broke. That one was locked. But this impact got it out. Again, I'm just, I'm giving it a nice pull back. I just dropped my other camera. That sucks. Hopefully it's okay. We'll find out when we go to that one. And let's try this. I'm just grab it right here. Let's give it a whirl. Let's go. If we can go four for four. That one turned. Yeah, these were locked. Rust came flying off of that one. And we can go and grab this one right here. There we go. All four. We went four for four on that. Imagine that. All right, don't want to go too crazy again on speed and pulling stuff out again because this is all aluminum. They can fall apart pretty easy. This wasn't like welded on there or anything. So that was good. Gasket came off or did it stay? Hardly even looks like there's a damn gasket on there to be quite honest. And we'll go ahead and take this one off. Nice and slow. I gotta get gotta get used to my, my trigger. Make sure I don't go too fast pulling this stuff out because I can see how you could potentially strip this stuff out really, really easily. Now that one was welded on there a little bit like that, but we got it. There we go. We've got two here. And I'm just gonna put these in. I think I have new bolts for these in the common motor kit. So I'm not too worried about that, but just for now, I'm gonna put these back in these holes and they can hang out and then when we get this thing back together we will tackle all that it's a fun stream man we're all we're always getting into something different one thing could be said is that uh i definitely am not playing it safe now i don't know like if these are good or if they're bad again i'm just replacing these because i know they're very troublesome based on everything i've read uh, it's a, there's a, like they, they seem to be a culprit for a lot of things um, that where people are having trouble like tuning a bike. So I think just putting new ones on is just a good thing to do, um, to do that. So that's that. Um, probably don't need to mess with any of this. I want to keep the bulk of the motor together um, while I get it all cleaned. Because um, that can get kind of messy. So I don't want to go pulling off the right cover. I don't want to get into any of that. In fact, part of me kind of wants to put that cover back on here as well, or at least put some sort of a, or you know, it'd be help if you could see what I'm talking about. Be nice to like put the cover back on here. Um, I could reuse that old gasket just to seal this off a little bit so yeah, I don't get a bunch of stuff in here because that's your main, like a main bearing right there. So that's kind of a, kind of a big deal. Cars, you guys still talking about cars. Yeah, Brian T, if you find one, let me know. Um, I mean, I would, I, I would entertain it if it wasn't a complete basket case because it would have to be my daily driver. You're banned from more projects. <laughs> oh, totally. Uh, putting that on the restore list. I adopt them all, mostly old ones with problems. I know there's this, uh, it's like a 72 CB175 for sale, not far from me. Um, that I'm very tempted. Like if I go walk over to him and be like, I'll give you $300 for it. Um, see if he would do it. So hex ones, uh, not sure. Da, 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 da. Brian T. Okay. That's not to me. Uh, yes, Vika, um, summer still Phillips. Yeah. I think I've got the, the, if you're talking about the, uh, the bolts up there, that would be it. So yeah, I think that's what I'll end up doing is I'll put this cover back on, um, and then get to cleaning this all up. And then uh, look at this beauty. How is that so terrible? You know, the rest of this engine is so clean, um, relatively clean anyway. Um, I mean, everything has moved, everything has done so well on it. Um, I think probably one of the next videos I do is probably degreasing and cleaning the engine. 
Like, we got to get all this stuff out of here. I mean, this is all just nasty, nasty right here. It's like that. Yeah. I mean, I think that this is going to be knock on wood again, knock on wood. Um, I think we're going to be okay on this one, man. Hanging at 25 at two and a half hours. This is incredible. Um, blown away. I love what we're building here. I love it. So many opportunities, so many opportunities to do stuff. So very, 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 very cool. What's going on here? Liam, Liam just subscribed to the channel. Thank you, Liam. That's awesome. Starting to fire off some backlog uh, alerts right now. So that's awesome. Those subscriptions on the YouTube channel um, really, really mean a lot, man. Um, I'm trying to grow that channel, um, you know, to just make it something that's super useful for everybody. If, uh, I don't know, if you just randomly found it, I mean, the YouTube channel is loaded with so many damn videos. <laughs> it's, it's packed. So we're pushing 6,000. I'm hoping to um, hit 6,000 here. Um, may, probably not by the end of the month, the way things are pacing out. Um, but, you know, what do you, what, what do you do? So got my YouTube mix saved there, but then also um, we've got all of the 221 parts for the uh, Keep On Wrenching. Kind of the birth of everything that we did on this channel here. Gotta kill this thing, this is annoying. I don't, aren't those ads the worst? <laughs> Keep in mind when you guys watch the ads, everything's cool too. Um, but yeah, if you haven't watched some of the content here, there is no shortage of uh, things to be watching over there. So all good. All right, let's uh, dive into something else here. What are we working on? I got to clean up here just a little bit, wipe my hands. We knocked out two things that I wanted to do tonight. Honestly, I didn't have much else uh, planned for the stream. Um, I uh, wasn't really sure what I was going to be getting into. So Ford Transit. Uh, let's see, Tula Tom, I thought about sending you the link to that Honda, but didn't want it to be an enabler. <laughs> I already saw it, dude. <laughs> I saw it. Um, that cover is reached or roached. Yeah, roached. Yeah, it's roached. That one's done. Um, I mean, it could be, you know, stripped down, painted a color, re-chromed or whatever. Of course, you don't want to give up on all those parts and stuff, but that one's probably not going back on the bike. Brad, so many amazing resources, Brian. Awesome. Thanks, dude. I appreciate that. Um, so, I, yeah, it was so fun to put together, and uh, it's it's really rewarding to get all the different comments and, and things that are coming through every day, literally. Like, somebody finds a random video, and they're doing it. So, Vika, Vapor Rust is in. Now I stare at it for 24 hours. All right. So, to, so Vika, elaborate a little bit on what you did there. Um, I, I would love it if you could post some photos to the Facebook group, if you haven't already of what that inside of that tank looked like because it sounded like it was pretty bad. Um, so yeah, I, hopefully you knocked out most of it before you used the, uh, the, the magic stuff because if there's a bunch of crud in there, um, that can be a little challenging if it's all rust. I, I mean, I don't know because uh, the way you described it, it sounded uh, horrific, absolutely horrific. Brian T, I need to get some evapor rust cleaner for the gas tank. It works beautiful for like light, medium rust. But if you're having major issues, like the, uh, the Apocalypse Bikes tank, oh, that's in the other room. It's in a safe spot. Um, that one was miserable when I got it. I mean, it looked like some sort of a, a, a landscape on another planet inside of it. I, I worked at that one for, I bet I worked at that for three weeks at least with, with uh, a whole combination of, of vinegar, Vapo rust, and then I tumbled it like pretty much an entire afternoon for like probably six hours with a bunch of nuts and bolts inside of it to knock all the stuff out. It was a task. I'm hoping it's clean. I, I, as far as I can tell, it came out really, really clean. Brad, brake fluid worked really good for restoring my old signal light gaskets. I need to try that. So I've, I've heard about that. I think it's been mentioned in the chat many, many times. Um, you know, using brake fluid to bring back rubber pieces. So that, that's a video that I want to do as well. I got so many damn videos that I want to do. You know, I'm too conservative for Faceback. That's okay, and, and, and WJT. Um, sign up for the newsletter, though. I'll keep you up to date with what's been going on there. So go to keeponwrenching.com, sign up for the newsletter, and I'll try to keep you up to date with what's going on on there. Elaborate on Facebook. Perfect. We have a conversation over there. That, that'd be beautiful. Brian T, mine has baby micro spots. That's gonna be fine. Evaporust is gonna knock all of that out for sure. Just make sure you rinse it once you get the evaporust out. 
um, then get that thing full of gas as soon as you can. Um, I, I just prefer to keep them full of gas as long as you can. Um, I'm only on this group, <laughs> nice, uh, and Facebook Marketplace. I, the Marketplace is pretty damn useful. I mean, I've found most of my bikes. I, I have four or five. I lose track now of how many. I have like maybe four and a half. I don't know how many bikes I bought, to be quite honest. That's scary. Um, DOT4, okay, DOT4 brake fluid. I'm going to put that on my, on my wish list, I think. I'll grab some of that for sure. I don't. So this the the ceiling debate kind of came up uh, on on the uh, on the group the other day. Um, I have, in my opinion, based on what I've seen, if it doesn't need to be sealed, like with a with a red coat, I have a can of red coat over here. Um, if it doesn't need to be sealed, don't seal it because I I've heard more horror stories of 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 tank liners going bad. Than, uh, than, than them going good. So like here, I have this can. I was gonna do it on my first build. I've had this can uh, since rebuilding the gold 1970 CB350. Jeffrey, welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, it's, uh, I, I, after I bought it, I thought, oh, I'm just gonna do it. I just thought it would be the right thing to do. But then as I read on forums, man, people were like, um, don't do it. It's, it's, you have more of a, more of a likelihood to cause yourself some more problems um, than solutions to things. So, I mean, if it's not, if it doesn't have pinholes, if you're not having leaks, if you're not having problems, I, I personally, based off of just what I've read, um, I wouldn't do it. Um, and I mean, everybody has an opinion on everything, but it seemed unnecessary, I guess I would say. Um, and then there was somebody else in the Keep On Wrenching group that actually did have a pin, pin hole. I think it was Terrence. I think Terrence had a pinhole in his gas tank and he was actually able to like braze it or solder it. Um, so he didn't even have to weld it. He was able to repair that um, himself. I think he did it himself anyway. If, if he didn't, I'm just saying that. Yeah, yeah, you did. So that, that's all good. So uh, that's what I've heard on that. And WJT, I just watched your video in the wiring harness routing. Doing mine tonight. Thanks for making these vids. My pleasure, dude. I'm glad. I, I, I thought that that video would do well when I made it. Because I was like, I remember having to do a ton of research on trying to figure out how that actually rolled in there. So I'm glad you found it. I'm glad you found it useful. Um, that's, that, that's awesome. And thanks for finding the stream tonight, man. Like, how'd you find the stream? I, I'd be very interested... Um, to know you found that, if that popped into your suggestions or you subscribed to the channel or something like that. Um, I'd be very curious how people are finding the stream because we, like, we, I, I don't know if we got to 30, I might have missed it, um, but I know we were up to 28. I remember seeing 28 for sure on the stream tonight, which is freaking amazing. And another sub coming in, firing off the MacGyver alert. I love that. The MacGyver alert goes off and uh, we've got Rick coming in with the subscription to the YouTube channel. Keep those coming. That's amazing. Um, yeah, the channel's growing. This is, this is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. And if you want to support the channel, we got the t-shirts in. T-shirts are in and we already got grease on the t-shirt. That's a good night. That's a good night of getting some work done. So I just want to clean up here just a little bit and I just kind of want to ponder, you know, what we want to work on next here. Um, I'm not sure. Terrence, you're in here. Awesome. Sweet. Soldered it myself. Very easy as long as it's a pinhole. Yeah. So I've got this one over here. I think this one might be too far gone. Where was that? Yeah. <laughs> so you think we could solder that? <laughs> think we could solder that? Think, think you could fix that for me, Terrence? That would be amazing. Band name, Grease on the T-shirt. That's not a bad name for a band. But yeah, this tank's done. I, I mean, I, there's no saving this one, sadly. I want to turn this one into a piece of like art for the house or something, hang it on a wall. It's a cool old tank, though. I think this is a 70CL, if I remember right. Cool. Still trying to get these damn badges off. That might be a project for tonight to get the badges off because the badges are still, I think they're both on here. Yeah, both of them are on here, sitting right here. Eh, that might be something to do. There's no shortage, no shortage of projects in the Keep On Wrenching garage, that's for sure, or basement, whatever you want to call it. We got tanks. We got parts. We got all kinds of stuff going on. 
Yeah, climate. Yeah, it's a well job. I don't think it's even a well job. The inside of that tank is nasty. Um, it's uh, I think it's I think it's what you call it's like too far gone. Um, it's pretty pretty gone. So I'll probably just do something fun with that one for sure. Ashtray. That's a big ashtray. That's a big ashtray. I'm really digging on those shocks on the Apocalypse build. Yeah, me too, me too. I, I, the all black on the Apocalypse bike is looking cool. It's kind of sad that it's uh, kind of in a million pieces right now, uh, cause I had to kind of strip it all back down. But we can take a look at the bike for sure. Uh, give you a little closer look at it. I worked on some of the lighting for the stream this week. So hopefully you all are having a little bit better viewing experience from multiple angles in the in the stream hopefully if not we can go back but man i was having some real trouble but yeah that looks actually really nice so yeah i mean this is all put together let's get you a level I feel like we're on a ship just like that brian t liar who's lying who's lying love the color bubble gum that's a well job mm, ba -ba -ba -ba. who's lying lying Build an electrolysis tank, super cheap and easy, and an awesome rust remover for gas tanks. Climate right on. Um, that would be that would be interesting to do. Um, I've I've seen it. I've never done it. Looks like I might have missed a couple of other chats over here. I'm just gonna let you guys look at that beautiful back end of that bike for a little while. Yeah, I think Brian, you just need to evapor rust that darn thing. I think you're gonna be good. Hey Brian, thanks for stopping by the stream. You dipping out? Um, regulars be good. Yeah, the wrenchers, man. The wrenchers are showing up in force. Go, Pat, go. Um, yeah, that's going to be a hell of a game tonight, uh, uh, this weekend. Uh, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers. I'm sorry, Brian T. I, I cannot bring myself to root for the Packers. Uh, I, I respect what they're able to do, but I'm a Vikings fan, and I cannot, I can't, no, the Packers cannot go to the Super Bowl. I would be very disappointed. I would be very sad. Um, so I, I think I'm going to root for Tom Brady, but that's like no, I don't really feel good about that either. So I just hope it's a good game and I hope that everything, uh, everybody is safe and, and, and everybody is well and everybody enjoys themselves and has a wonderful time. So yeah, Apocalypse Bike is coming together pretty well. I'm loving it. Um, again, the big addition, additional tool that I got for the shop was a microfiber feather duster for those of you who missed it early on in the stream and I absolutely love it it just it's it's awesome actually because it's so dusty down here because I'm working on everything all the time and everything gets dusty and man it's like a microfiber feather duster and it just knocks out the dust like nobody's business probably the best eight bucks I've spent in my life well I wouldn't say that that might uh, be a bit of an exaggeration you can see the table there's the Whole situation, that's where I'm watching your chat, guys. Brian T, shame on you, Brian. It should be about the North. I just hate the Packers, I'm sorry. I, I really, I just don't like the Packers. Um, and it's not, I'm sure they're all really nice people. I'm sure, you know, I know a lot of Packer fans. Um, they're all good people, they're all, they're all awesome. Um, but I just hate their football team. I think their, their colors are gross. Um, green and yellow or green and gold, whichever you want to call it. But uh, yeah, I, just, I can't do it. Feather duster like a boss. You know it. Uh, Great Lakes pride. Yeah, it, but they're the Packers. Uh, can't do it. Good luck, though. I hope everybody is safe and I hope it's a good game. Either way, like it, uh, <laughs> they eat cheese. They do. I eat cheese. I mean, there's nothing wrong with eating cheese. Um, anyway, so what were we going to do here? Okay, I got all these old crusty bolts. Got to get these out of here. Just going to straighten up a little bit, watch the chat, get things rolling. It's getting kind of late already, huh? It's uh, going on 10 o'clock. So we've been going. Man, I guess time flies when you're having fun, right? I guess that's just kind of kind of how it goes. But we're doing cool stuff. Yeah, keep on wrenching community group. Post some pictures of the stuff that you're working on. I would love, love, love to see the type of stuff you guys are working on. Guys and gals, gotta be, gotta be fair, man. We got a good group here. We got an awesome group here. 
So let's take a little closer look at some of this stuff down here. And we got this out, no problem. We have to put that back. Can't believe that, that, that we got that. I mean, we're just full of happy mistakes. We got these out, got this. I need to keep all of this stuff very, very, very organized. Otherwise I'm gonna start losing stuff and it's gonna be a nightmare. We tried the, the rear axle thing. We tried it and it's plausible if your rear axle is in good shape. That one is not in good shape, so it's really not that plausible if everything's all roached up. So Vika, freshly rebuilt, previously clean petcock. All right, that's what you're working on. You're just kind of cleaning out that, that whole fuel system because you found the issue. You found the issue. How long was that gas in there? Mike's bike channel. I'd kill to have that room to work. Working on restoring an 04 Suzuki Katana 750. Labor of love. Good for you, man. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, this space, it just kind of worked out. It's like a little bit of an extra space in my basement built out. And uh, yeah, it's just uh, been a lot, a lot of fun to kind of build out. It seems like I, I spend some almost just as much time working on the studio um, than I do. or It's like studio shop, whatever. But it was really dedicated to being able to film everything. Um, and store everything and and all of that. So yeah, thanks for stopping by the channel. I'll have to check out your channel. Is that your is that your YouTube channel, Mike's Bike Channel? I'll have to I'll have to look that up actually, and uh, and go sub and see what kind of kind of vids you're making there. There's there's a cool community really being built um, around these restoration channels. There's there's a number of really really good ones um, that I I love. I love checking them out. And everybody's kind of got their own little take on, on, on how to do stuff and you learn something every single time that you do it. So, okay, so here's these bolts. What did I do with the other bolts? Did you guys see where the hell I put them? Oh, here we go. So I'm gonna go put these in a safe spot so I don't lose these. And we got so many parts coming up pretty quick. We're gonna be getting into the lacing the wheels episodes. Um, I'm not going to lie, I'm actually a little bit terrified of, I'm a little terrified of doing that, especially live on stream, because I remember it being a hell of a mind bender, um, getting it to work out, uh, just trying to make the video last time. I mean, I, I must have, honestly, I probably tried to make that, that uh, wheel lacing video five times before I finally got it and it all uh, kind of worked out for, for everything. Um, Mike, thanks. Got a lot more work to do on the channel. You've inspired me. That is awesome, dude. Dude, there's plenty of room for everybody. Um, I mean, you carve out a Suzuki niche or, or whatever it is. Dude, just roll with it. Um, we, we're all in this together, and there is plenty to go around, man. I'll, I'll definitely go check out your channel, Mike's Bike Channel. need to remember that. Actually, I'm just going to take a picture of that right now, and as I go through my camera roll, um, I will go and do that. Bam, there we go, cool. Got a new sub coming, buddy. Keep up the good work. Tyler, looking forward to that. I have to lace my wheels here pretty soon. Well, I mean, the video on the channel should help you get going in the right direction. The, the lesson that I learned on that you know, the, the lesson that I learned on the lacing of the wheels was like just starting in the right spot. Like if you can start in the right spot, and I'm not sure if I 100% understand where starting in the right spot is. Um, you know, um, that, then it all kind of goes together like butter. It just choop, goes perfect. But if you're like off one, you're totally screwed. So yeah, we'll do it, I promise, we'll do it. I'm a little apprehensive of getting into the wheel truing, but Tula, the, uh, Tula, you'll appreciate this. I did get, I did get it. That's, let me move some of this stuff out before I reveal this amazing little contraption. Uh, I forget, everything is magnetized. Everything is magnetized. Here, I wanna show you guys this. So I am preparing. I am preparing myself. I got myself a tusk. 
torque wrench for spokes. I have no idea how to use this tool. This is not a cheap tool, by the way. Um, Vika, you make me want to film. You're an inspiration, sir. Well, thank you very much. And you should just start filming. Um, you should you just do it. Just, just do it. I have a good friend of mine that, that, that does all kinds of cool stuff, um, you know, working with restoring um, old musical instruments and things like that. And he, he, you know, I'm always telling him, like, dude, just make videos. Just do it. People are going to love this stuff. Just do it. Nobody's going to take your birthday away if your video sucks and nobody watches it. It just is a video out there that nobody's going to watch. You know, so don't let that stop you. So, yeah, here it is. Um, well, that's a really great question. Let's actually look at that, Tula. It came with all of these, and then for some reason, um, it was missing four. So there weren't four of them. Like, it wasn't full. So um, I have to go back and look to see if it's missing something um, or if I have to buy some additional uh, heads on this. It looks like all of Well, no, it looks like that one might work. Here, let me cut one of these bags open. And we can actually take a look at that. Where is my scissors? My scissors. There's my scissors. Well, actually, yeah, that'll work. That'll work. So here's my new spoke kit. Let's get one of the nipples. Yeah, I said nipples. Get the nipples out. And, oh man, Jesus, what kind of quality plastic bag do they put this in? Let's see what size these are. Brad, my wheels are laying on the garage floor, cold, alone, staring at me. <laughs> yeah, go curl up next to him, man. So what, you got the wheels off? You got the wheels off the bike? That's freaking awesome. That's progress. It looks like this is 6.3 millimeter. Feels a little bit big to me. There's the ticket. I think that's the one, 6.1. That should be it. Definitely not these. And it looks like they were going up in size. So it's 6.1, 6.3, 6.9, 6.8. Yeah, it's, like, it's almost like missing parts here. And they're not in order. What's up with that? Yeah, sometimes, I don't know. I might have got, I wonder if I got an incomplete kit. 6.3, 6.8, So I think it probably went something like that. But yeah, look at that. I'm missing a whole bunch of them in here. It's just super annoying. But I can go and find the right bit. This 6.1 feels good, but I feel like a 6 would actually be better. So... Another another thing that, that, that we gotta gotta drive to. I don't see a 5.6 in here. Um, which 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 is which is weird. Yeah, nice. They're off. Good for you, dude. Good for you. That's a big deal. It's a big deal once you start getting into the wheels. Yeah, I haven't even looked at this kit yet, but I did think it was kind of weird that these slots weren't totally full. Yeah, there's that 6.3 or 6.1. Okay, Tula, yeah, go for it. Yeah, um, that'd be awesome. Do that, 5.6 millimeter for the set. Um, I've got the torque wrench. Um, here it is. It's a Tusk. It should be a pretty good one. I paid good money for it. Um, so we've got it when that time comes. Um, I, again, I have no freaking clue how to use it. But just like everything else on the Keep On Wrenching channel, we're going to learn how to use it together. I mean, that's just kind of how it, how it kind of goes. I mean, I certainly am not pretending to be the expert around here. I'm just, uh, I don't know. Oop, trying stuff. Just keep trying. Can't hurt, you know. Whoo, getting tired here, but we're going to keep going a little bit. Uh, Brian, I'll order 576 at Brad. Uh, Vika, I just did my battery box and air box. Brad just did his battery box as well. Um, came out freaking minty. Uh, you should post some photos of that in the Keep On Wrenching group. Let's actually check back on the Keep On Wrenching group. Um, let's see. 
uh, if we got anything cool going on here. Oh, God, I'm like getting free views on my, on my videos. That's no good. We got to turn that off. See if we got any new membership requests. We got some activity in the, in the group for sure. No member requests. If you're watching and you're not a part of the group, man, please go sign up. We're sitting at 82 members strong. Amazing. I love this, this uh, Terrence, your rant today. Put a smile on my face, man. Yeah, we all been there. Yeah, oh, perfect. Perfect GIF response. I love a, a good GIF response has a special place in my heart. Magnets are heading the way. Drew, that's right. Oh, my God. Let's retouch on, uh, touch base on, on some of the things that, we, that I got sitting right in front of here. Uh, Drew uh, contributed to the group in a huge way. Um, we've got magnets on the way, but then we also have um, the uh, stickers. So we've got keep on wrenching stickers. Um, I'm going to start finding a way to kind of get these out to you. I, gotta, I just got to figure out a way uh, to do it and, uh, you know, make it happen. But we got stickers. I got big stickers. I got all kinds of, of cool stuff, man. And, you know, again, props to Drew. He's a huge, uh, I don't know, man. Yeah, I, I enjoy interacting with you back and forth throughout the day uh, sometimes. It's just like a nice break to be like, oh, okay, you're dealing with this. Oh, this. this? Oh, okay. Um, it's been really awesome. But above and beyond, I mean, how freaking cool is this? Now, I probably won't, I won't be able to give away any of the logo, Honda logo stuff because I'll probably get sued or something. Um, but anything, keep on wrenching, is all fair game. And uh, we're going to do that. So I got to get the key rack up. I got to get the tool rack up. But then also, got a handful of stickers. Got a handful of stickers for everybody. Um, and uh, rock and roll on that. So, uh, da, 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 da. what else going on in chat? Um, Brad, are you upgrading air intake while it's all off? Uh, what would the upgrade to the air box, new filters, OEM? Uh, I, I would recommend that you stay to um, original uh, air. Uh, unless you get into a jetting problem, but you know, anything's possible when you go down that. Uh, any customization, nice little hidden place to leave your mark. Um, I subscribed. Mike, uh, oh, ba -ba 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 -ba, says it's pending approval. Oh, let me go back over here. Let's go, pending approval. Uh, let me pull this up. Let me go, let's refresh here. No pending members. It's not showing. What is going on here? It's Facebook. Uh, Facebook being a little party pooper here. Let's see. Yeah, what the heck is that? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, Mike's bike channel. I want to get you in here. Pending approval. Are you talking about keep on wrenching group, or are you talking about the YouTube channel? Let me see if the a new alert came up here. Yeah, again, thanks to Dave. Uh, keep up the fun, my friend. That $50 donation earlier, that was amazing. Um, that was huge. Huge, huge, huge. Yeah, Brian and I discussed as one time I thought pod filters, the pod filters do look cool. Opting to keep them socked, don't have to reset the carbs. Yeah, that, that just gets into a, like a jetting problem. I don't know why that's, it's not boring. It's not boring because if you use the original side covers, like if you go back to the original side covers, which are awesome when you can clean those up. Awesome Tula, you rock. You, you freaking rock, dude. And we'll be able to jam on that. Um, reliability is an overarching priority. Absolutely. I don't think that the stock stuff is, is boring at all. Um, because they, they, they match so well um, with, uh, with all of the other parts of the bike, like the little brass rod and the little box and all the stuff. It all comes together. And then those beautiful little plastic covers go on the back side of it. And you got your badges there. And you can look at all that stuff. So, I mean, that's just me. I mean, it's your bike. You can do whatever the hell you want. Um, you know, but uh, I, I, I already have enough problems, like getting carburetors tuned and getting stuff to work out right that... I just stay stock with it and, and have a little bit of fun now with the, with the aesthetics of the bike just a little bit. But anyway, yeah, okay, 5.5, 5. 5. I said 5.56, oops, um, 5.6 millimeter, okay, that's what that is. And then, yeah, we'll try. We'll try and make it happen, dude. Um, but again, Drew, Drew came through big 
for the group. And uh, thanks so much. I can't not wait to get those magnets. The magnets are going to be awesome. Let's go back over here. Take a look at that post. Yeah, look at that. Boom. Those are going to be cool. I want, I want one, and then there you can see it on the fridge. That, I mean, that's like the coolest thing ever um, to see, you know, kind of the keep on wrenching logo um, in the environment of, of the members. And I mean, that, I don't know, that, that's, um, that's cool stuff. That's cool stuff. And then Drew, well, he also uh, picked up a 70 CB350. Take a look at this gem. Um, this thing is pretty much darn near complete, minus a new seat cover, um, probably. But there it is. Yeah, carbs are a pain in the butt sometimes. I don't know what that is. What is that? What is that? I don't know what that is. But yeah, so that's uh, that's going to be... I, these are my favorite tanks, though. These tanks, 100%, are like my favorite in the world. And then, yeah, Vika, you've been going through your whole deal. Please keep us posted on progress with that. And what I love about this is, you know, you started having problems. And the group just jumped in and I, I mean, and people are just started throwing in, you know, recommendations of like, try this, try this, try this, do this. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we have a very active group um, going on here. And I think we're all kind of, I don't know if we're all in the same place or what the deal is, um, but we're all just engaging and, uh, and, and doing all this. The, the group is absolutely fantastic. So um yeah here's another problem there's a welded out steve had an issue here um and P i didn't know what the hell to do with it i don't think i even said anything because i was like i'm out i don't know what the hell to do with it but terrence hopped in vika hopped in um everything was good i'm very curious to see rich if rich is in the stream tonight i want to see how this comes out um what did he say how long was he going to keep it in there a month i don't know if you need to keep it in there a month dude but he's trying to restore an old vice you know so he just literally just dropped it um you know, dropped it right in, in, in there. It, it's crazy. Um, different parts, all this stuff. So yeah, really the, uh, the member request isn't coming through here um, for uh, Mike's bike channel. Unfortunately, I don't see that, but maybe we're talking YouTube, maybe we're talking two different things. Um, I haven't had a chance to really work on the website at all. Um, the support, the merch is all there. And that's one thing I could show you guys because um, I did want to get a sample of some of the stuff my hands are a little bit dirty, so I don't really want to touch that. But check this out, guys. Boom, this little slicker. The slicker is really cool. And I was happy to see that it was actually, it's a Champion brand jacket. So it's actually pretty good quality. It's just a, a rain slicker. You can actually get it in orange. I was thinking about getting an orange one. Uh, just for riding. So again, you can get that on the merch store if you want to support the channel, whatever. Um, I love it. I'll be wearing it uh, once it actually absolutely warms up. Uh, never mind. Says I've joined Facebook. Keep on wrenching group. Thanks for the ad. Awesome, Mike. I'm glad we got that sorted. Um, I'll check out that YouTube channel. Brad, was that a Subaru? Was that a Subaru? It was that on the on the page. I like that person. <laughs> yeah, Brad. Brad's a Subaru guy. He's a Subaru guy for sure. Uh, Vika, everyone's super helpful. Parts inspector in the background. Oh, oh yeah, Murphy's hanging out. Hey, Murph, what are you doing, buddy? He doesn't know what to think about what the hell's going on. He's like, dude, we're going to play? We're going to do something yet? Come here. Come here. This is Murphy, guys. Don't want to put him on the table, though, because it's all gross and yucky, but he's, he's a good guy. He's a good kitty. He's uh, just uh, desperate for a little bit of attention tonight. So, all right, Tyler. Yep, cat emoji. Well played. Well placed cat emoji for sure. Uh, what do we want to get into here, guys? What do we want to get into? Do I want to get into anything? We're at three hours. We're at three hours. <laughs> three hours of streaming. Got the keep on wrenching mug. One thing I don't like about the keep on wrenching mug is that the logo is on this end of the handle. And it should be like this on the side, don't you think? That's the only thing I don't like. I'm gonna see if I can change that. But this also guarantees that I'm gonna be up for a while. So I'll be working on a lot of stuff. All right, starter cable. Just getting cleaned up before we dive into something else. And I'm just trying to see like, what am I gonna be inspired to work on? I had one project. Well, here's, here's two projects. 
One's a big project, one's a small project. <laughs> we can get our, uh, our uh, stator rotor out of the cover that we're actually gonna be using. I think that would probably be a good thing. I wanna get this stuff out of the way. Don't wanna screw up the stickers. I gotta come up with a way. What do you guys think, like, what would be a cool way to distribute stickers? I don't wanna just, uh, I don't wanna sell them. I wanna just give, a, stickers should be free. I feel like stickers should be free. There's that, there's that stool again. Zup Murphy, two, two carb rebuild. Yeah, we could, I got a whole stack. I got a whole freaking stack of carburetors over here, man. Actually, let me grab this one. Let me come back over here. I added a little bit of an extension on this camera, so bear with me here, so I could actually get back to the rack. I have just a few carburetors sitting here that need to be dealt with. Lots of carburetors to deal with in this area. So that's possible. We could try and tear one of those apart if that's something we want to dive into. I mean, we need one more project. We, we kind of need one more project tonight to come out strong. So I'm kind of feeling like, let's pull this apart so I can actually polish this part because this part polishes really, really, really fast. Like we could probably get this one done tonight if we wanted to. Terrence, Murphy, Murphy keeps the shop mouse free. Need him at my place. You got a lot of mice out there? Yeah, Murphy, yeah, I don't, luck, I, luckily I don't have mice, so knock on wood, thank God for that. Um, but yeah, he is a killer. He's gotten, he's gotten his fair share of like voles. Uh, he got, I think he got, yeah, he got a chipmunk one time. Um, yeah, he, he's a killer. Mike's Bike Channel, I always get the big projects out of the way first. I've kind of got a lot of the big projects out of the way. I mean, the next, the next big project that I have is honestly degreasing and cleaning and polishing that engine. That's, that's the biggest one. Um, and then the wheels. Um, I've got the, I got the front wheel all taken apart. And uh, it's a rusty bugger. So this is going to take some work. But I did want to show you guys this as well. Look at this bin. Okay, this is a flexible rubber container. They're called Red Gorilla Bins. Go Google them. They're like 20 bucks. Okay, th this has quickly become one of the most handy damn things that I've ever had in the shop because you can carry stuff around in it like this. But look at the magic of this. Here's an 18 inch wheel right inside. And that's where I can fill it up with vinegar. I can fill it up with evaporust. I can do whatever I need to with that. Um, the trick is, is just to fill in all the dead space as much as you can with rocks or weights or bottles or something like that. Um, Cause then it doesn't really take that much of apple rust to clean one of these wheels. These freaking red gorillas. I, I, I honestly am thinking about calling that company and saying, hey, um, give me an affiliate link. I will sell these because I mean, it's like a, it's like a shop purse for parts or something. It's, it's just so useful. And the fact that you can take one of these wheels and drop it right inside there is, uh, is, is awesome. I love the flexibility of it. And uh, yeah, Red Gorilla, I think is what they were. And they're the bigger flat ones that they've got. Highly recommend, it's amazing. Nice, a friend of yours gave you one, that's awesome. It's a good friend, thinking of you. <laughs> Dog King 1013. That's a new name. I haven't seen that one in the in the stream before, I don't think. Hey, welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining. Keep on wrenching. That's awesome. Is the stator cover just aluminum or is it or is it painted? Oh, it's aluminum um, for sure. Um, I can show you. Here we can take a look. We can take a look at this one. So here's one that we took off. We took this one off today, all right? This is just oxidized aluminum as far as I know. I don't, do you guys know if they painted these? Um, either way, if they painted them, I think that's kind of dumb because you can make them look like this. <laughs> like you can polish these things out. They're uh, aluminum. So here's one that hasn't been cleaned. Here's one that has been cleaned. It's all, this one's dirty too. It's all covered with stuff. Oh, I could use my brand new microfiber feather duster clean that up just a little bit and that thing's shiny right so yeah they'll clean up dude i got a bunch of videos on the youtube channel um to be able to do that doubles has a laptop case for sure for sure 
Um, yeah, Mike, you're totally right. Evaporust in the in the uh, in the gorilla bin. Game on. It's all. It, it's all, that that bin. I find myself using it so often. I, I really do. Um, it's just so practical. Um, like I can I can dump parts out in it, and then you can like if it is full. Like, man, let's go back, because I, I do love it. When I find a product that I like, I like to talk about it. So it's like, boom, we got this all full of evapo rust. Rim's done. Oop, you can pull that out, and then you just grab it like this, and you can dump the stuff right out into your bucket, and then you can store it or filter it out or whatever. It is just a brilliant idea. A brilliant idea, and I think they're 20 bucks. 20 bucks for a red gorilla. Why, they, why it's red gorilla? I don't freaking know. Maybe they only make red ones. I don't know. All right, let's do something. Let's tear into this. Let's get this, this thing apart so we can actually clean this piece because that is what we're working on on the uh, Apocalypse bike. And this is very, very straightforward, very, very simple. Polished covers, I love them. I love them. Tula, they have a clear coat on the aluminum, so sometimes they look yellow a bit. Okay, so it's just a yellow. I know, like, sometimes I'm finding gray paint all over stuff. I'm not really sure, like, what is painted, what the hell is what. I like to take them down to bare metal. I like to buff them, polish them, um, get them looking real, real pretty. Um, I usually don't clear coat them. I just leave them alone um, and try to keep them really, really clean. But clear coating wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. Mike's Bike Channel beats the hell out of kitty litter bins. Yeah, no, it's just the perfect size. It is the perfect size for 18 and 19 inch wheels. That's that's like the main deal. Ooh, yeah, I love this. Guys, this was like your biggest gift to me ever, for sure, um, was uh, getting me to start using this tool. This thing is a game changer. Game changer. Do you guys recognize that melody that I just sang to you? Game changer. If so, you get a sticker. It was a song by a band. There's my four screws for that. Doubles has a kitty litter bin. My cats ain't pooping in that. That thing is way too valuable. Way too valuable. My cats will not be pooping in my red gorilla. I never thought that'd be a sentence that would come out of my mouth. My cats ain't pooping in my red gorilla. Let's pop this out of here, just like that. Ooh, close, Brad, close. Hot pocket, close, but it's not. It's a song, not a comedy sketch. Yeah, th this impact is such a game changer. I'm, I'm all in. I'm, I'm almost the 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 electric torque and the electric buffer, um, I, I do have to say that I'm, I'm convinced they're amazing. So this all looks like really, really, <laughs> really damn clean. This is one of the cleaner ones I, I've, I've taken apart for sure. So this will go back in the bike uh, for sure. So I'm gonna put this over here in a safe little spot like that. <sighs> and now we kind of got this cover. We got this little cover right here. Um, that we can start working on. Now this does look like it has been painted. No, it's not hot pocket. Now you gotta go a little bit deeper. You gotta answer the question to get a sticker. Need another bar. I forgot what the hell I even sang anyway. What, 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 what words was I, was I even singing? I don't even remember. That's how flighty I am here. Oh, a hot pocket now. I do too. I want a freaking hot pocket. Who's holding out on the hot pockets? I'd be all in. Murphy wants a freaking hot pocket. I gotta get some of these parts out of here. It's getting crazy. It's getting crazy beans. Starting to get too much stuff compiled. I think I need to do a little bit more research on rebuilding the starter. Um, that would be a fun video. That's a video I haven't done. So I do have like a list of videos that I haven't done that I should do um, to kind of complete the whole series. And rebuilding the starter is definitely one of them. It's not Hot Pocket. No, it's not. 
No, it wasn't. Like, I gotta go back and chat now. Damn it. I gotta go back and chat now and figure out what the hell it was. I wasn't singing Red Gorilla, was I? Ah, it's, it's gone. The, the moment is gone. Everyone gets a sticker. I know. Vika, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, I, I want to figure out a way to, like, facilitate that. And have enough, because this damn group is growing. A lot. <laughs> so I need to figure that out. It's like growth problems. You know, it's hard to keep up with comments right now on the, on the channel, honestly. I mean, it's, it's kind of an ordeal. So this looks like it's been painted to me. And ideally, so I'm inside right now, so I don't really want to get into it. But what I would typically do is I would use like an aerosol paint stripper and uh, strip the, the paint and the clear, the clear coat and the paint off of this and then go to town on polishing it. That's definitely paint. I'm just gonna get just a little bit of sandpaper just to double check, but I'm pretty sure. Like this is a piece that I wouldn't even necessarily like mind having to do by hand because it's really not that big. Um, and the, all the, there's like no like crazy contours on it that you got to deal with. So I'm just kind of curious to see. See what happens here. Yeah, definitely. I think that's paint. Yeah, so the easiest thing to do, honestly, is just to lay some paint stripper on this and just knock this out. I can't believe that I did two bikes all by hand, just like this. What was I thinking? Like, why, why was I doing that to myself? Yeah, so like this took forever. My God, I went through so much sandpaper doing that. I'm cutting, I'm cutting myself one while I'm doing a new color for the tank. Yeah, grab the logo off the site. I think you should just be able to download the PNG. Um, make it free use, guys. Go for it. I kind of feel bad because like a lot of my videos were like uh, the, in that whole series, you know, it's like do it by hand. It'll be so much more, you know, wonderful for your, <laughs> for your emotions or something. And uh, honestly, at the end of the day, it was just like a giant arduous task to be able to do it. I mean, I would literally take one piece a week. But again, I've just sat here for, I think maybe two minutes. Maybe two minutes. And we're already starting to see some signs of life there. You know, so it didn't take much. It took a lot of product to get through it. But it's there, right? There it is. Brad, I'm working on growing a second set of arms and hands to work on projects and text simultaneously. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the challenge. <laughs> that's the challenge, right? Because I want you guys to all be making progress on your projects, right? Um, you don't need to be chatting, but man, I love, I, I love the, uh, love the freaking freaking channel. Mike's Bike Channel, there's so many projects I can't do right now because of winter, sanding, painting, being chief among them. Yeah, totally. Um, I, I have, I, I can paint out in my garage. I just have to like heat it up. And you know, that takes a few hours to get it heated up. And then, you know, you can't really open the doors. The fumes are freaking crazy. You know? So like, here I am again. This is like, I'm falling right back into old habits here. And I'm and I'm starting to sand these, piece, these pieces. I start out with a 400, Brad. Uh, that's where I start, is a 400, 400, 600, 800, 1,000, 1,200, 1,500, and then start using some of the polishing compounds, and then it'll all come out minty. But I'm not gonna get into that tonight. I mean, if I could get the paint stripper on it, just to I, knock the paint off, and then, dude, seriously, like, that's why you got buffing wheels. 
You know, I've got the whole, the wheels are just sitting there waiting to work, you know. Not any WD-40. I didn't find WD-40 to really work on aluminum. Um, WD-40 works really good on chrome, um, but it didn't really do much for the aluminum. I mean, aluminum, you just got to bust through the, the oxidation, you know. And if you, once you can do that, um, it starts to go pretty fast. Tyler, Central Machinery from Harbor Freight. I got it for $53. Are you talking about a buffer? You got one from Eastwood? Yeah, the buffer is a game changer. There is a little bit of a, a little bit of a nuance to them that I, I think is, is a big difference. It's like, so let me grab this other camera here. So I was using um, just my six inch bench grinder like this. And uh, that was fine, that, that, that was fine. It did really, really well. But the big difference in having a buffer like this is really the distance that you have to work with here. I mean, here you've got a longer arm and then here these are like really stubby and short. So depending on how you got it mounted, I got mine mounted on, on stands like this. Just having like this extra, you know, I don't know, two, three inches of, uh, of, of, of space on, on, on that buffer make all the difference because then you can get you know, these parts, you know, really working parts into different, different areas. And here's a little bit too short. The throw is a little bit too short and you'd run into some issues with that, um, but it still works. So what I'm going to have on here is a, a, a brass brush is what I'm going to go to right now. I've got a steel brush on here. I'm going to go to a brass brush and then I'm going to have a grinding stone here. And then I'm going to have my two polishers. Um, I've been using three pads, um, but I think for the most part, you know, for that final fine polish, I can always just switch out one of these. That's not a big deal, but it would be nice just to have, you know, a brass brush and a grinder or, or steel and brass brush, whatever. Um, but it'd be nice just to have something that you can work with. But that, that's the biggest difference, honestly, is just having this throw on this area right here. Um, that, 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 that's huge. Having the two of them was a game changer. And these are not that expensive relatively. Look at that dust. Um, you know, this, I got to clean this space. It's nasty. Um, I need to, um, I think that like you could get them for like 80 bucks. I got this for $30 on a, on a, on an estate garage sale. Um, and then I got this one. I think I paid a hundred bucks for it on marketplace used. That came with the stand though. Um, to come up with the stand that, that, that was a freaking win. That was a win and a half for sure all day long. So yeah. Okay. Back over here. Um, yeah, it is. It is, dude. Um, David, uh, that, that logo was, was uh, created. And I, yeah, I do have ownership of that. So um, yeah, that's mine. That is mine. It was ridiculously easy to, um, to create that stuff. Um, the, the tools available for content creators and stuff these days are absolutely amazing. Like here I am now, like I'm like just falling into old habits here. I'm just like starting to polish. So then here's the other, another thing here. Here's the front wheel. I did take that apart this weekend. This is just dirty, honestly. Um, like I'm gonna have to polish the hell out of it. But this too is gonna go really fast. This is one of the easiest parts to polish for sure. Um, is, is to do that. Brad, love the, the blooper video of me buffing. Yeah, I, I could have I died that night. I could have, something very bad could have happened to me that night. Glad it didn't do that. Uh, Drew, is it possible to post a picture on a comment? Bet that would help when people suggest a tool or have an example of what they used or did. Not in the live stream chat. There's no way to post photos. Um, that's, I do kind of wish that they would do that, but I also understand why they don't allow that. Um, because, you know, from a moderation standpoint, that could be problematic, especially with, you know, some of the bigger groups and things like that. Because who knows what kind of stuff um, people would start posting. So I get it. So you can't post photos in the chat here. Um, but that's kind of what the Facebook group is for, honestly. Um, that's where you could do some of that. Um, and I know not everybody uses Facebook. I'm not really sure what another option would, would, would really be, but you know, yeah. Facebook group, your buffing video is how I found you the first time. Nice. 
before YouTube pointed me to the live stream. Awesome, Vika. That's good to know. That buffing video um, has done pretty much all the heavy lifting for everything that I've done um, so far. That and the chrome spray paint video. Boy, those are the two that, that, uh, that keep cruising. I get comments on both of those every single day. But I'm glad YouTube's like directing you over to the channel uh, or to the live streams when they come up. That's, that's pretty huge. Oh, Kevy Kev, that's a really good idea. So when I'm, I do online games, we have a Discord channel. That is a really good idea, actually, Kevy Kev. Didn't even think of that. I was kind of like blocking out. I'm going to take a picture of that. Um, I was kind of blocking like that other part of, of my life kind of out of it, right? Um, yeah, Discord channel. That would make total sense um, for some ongoing conversation and stuff. I will look into that. Didn't even think of that. Thank God for you, man. Awesome. Mike Spike channel. David Crump as his new follower to his lawyer. I urge you to get on that right away. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. as far as I know, I, I'm almost 100% positive that when this was all created and that all went through, it's a copyright for Keep On Wrenching um, and LLC and, and all of that stuff that I'm learning so much about <laughs> these days. It's a, it's a journey. It's been, been really interesting to dive into all this stuff. So anyway, back to the wheel. Yeah, Discord is uh, it's just like a, another messenger. Yeah. Yeah, and it's got a lot of functionality. I mean, that, that would also allow um, you all to communicate with each other um, outside of the stream, which would be really freaking cool. Um, because now kind of the only way is maybe through the Facebook group um, and through the comments and things like that, or you have to like or you have to do all of that um, and all that. Yeah, well, Vika, you're not stealing it because I own the copyright to it, and if you misuse it, I'm coming after you. I just can't. Um, Discord is what would be a great way to do that because then if you guys want to continue with some conversations, you could do that. I really like that idea. I, I, I can't, um, yeah, Dog King, totally. That, uh, Discord makes total sense. I can't believe I, I, I use Discord with, uh, with, with, a, with a bunch of other, other little groups that, that I deal with on and off. And yeah, it's always something. You know, what I might do is I might actually just replace TikTok with Discord because. Um, I enjoy TikTok, but I hate making TikToks. <laughs> Come at me, bro. <laughs> yeah, different topics, all of that. Nah, dude, totally. I, I'm starting to see it all really clearly. A Discord would be an awesome way, awesome way to do it. Yeah, man, we got a lot of people able, able to make that stuff. I mean, I was blown away by, by Drew coming, coming through. Solid win on, on, on making all that stuff. That was incredible. I could use the extra hands. <laughs> we could all use extra hands. I wish I had two right hands that work good because my left hand is just like, I guess I can hold something, but like this one is the only thing I can do. So I don't know. Ambidest it was ambidextrous people. Um, they're very, very lucky. They have the best of both worlds. Take a look at this. Like, look at this. Coming off of this old bike, this don't look bad at all. The inside of this brake hub. Usually these are all rotted out. They look terrible. But this actually looks really smooth. This will clean up really, 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 really easily um, with a little bit of, um, ah, shoot, what the hell is this stuff called? Emery cloth, I think it was. Emery cloth uh, to clean this up and make sure that the inside of the brake is all clean. Um, hopefully this weekend I'm going to knock out this stuff. Um, knock out the wheels, get them done. I'm actually kind of satisfied with where my rear hub is at right now. Um, I kind of feel like it's, it's in a pretty good place as far as polish. I don't know if I'm really gonna get it that much better. And plus, your rear wheel gets dirty. Like the one thing I've really noticed like on my 70 is I put all that work into hand sanding everything to almost a mirror finish on that first bike. And now I look at it and it's, it's clean and it's pretty, but it's, but it's dirty. I mean, it's your rear wheel, it gets dirty. And unless you're like really OCD, um, you're not gonna go down in there and be cleaning all that stuff out. So I actually feel pretty good about where this wheel is right now. I mean, right now it's got some gunk on it, but. So then the next thing is bearings, getting the bearings put back in. 
you know, doing all this different stuff. And again, this one's not bad on the inside. So I think we're really close. I got to work this edge a little bit more. But other than that, I think we're good. So I just need to get this to look like that. And that's, then that's the, and that's the problem. Uh, Vika, I have a two foot by 10 foot capacity on a vinyl cutter. Damn, that's cool. All the cars have decals. I bet I would too if I had one of those. Uh, Vika, can you make a sticker that says I break for donuts? But I can't do the printing of stuff. Just a 2D C and C. I don't know what that means. The 2D C and C. Oh, is it like a, oh, it's like a vinyl letter cutter kind of a thing? Ooh, I love donuts. Haha, <laughs> donuts as in pastries or donuts as in spinning good times? Ha! <laughs> uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Brian is my long lost brother, gamer, bike restorer, content creator. What did you just become? My best friend, <laughs> my best stepbrother's reference. Yeah, right, dude? Totally. Um, yeah, um, gaming is something that I wish I had more time for, honestly. I love uh, getting online, playing some games, um, doing that. I've got a couple games that I really enjoy, but I honestly just have not had a ton of time um, to be able to, to, to do that. Um, so, but yeah, that's where Discord is, and I've used Discord a ton um, over the years. It's a no brainer. I'm going to really look into that. That is a no-brainer ad on. And that is a great movie, by the way. That, that is uh, a great movie. Uh, at the same time, my heaven. Oh my God, eating donuts while doing donuts? I need a cricket sounder. That's what I need, I need a cricket sounder. Um, so my number one game, Vika, that I love um, and pretty much that I play 90% of the time, sadly, um, I love DayZ. Um, I think DayZ is such an awesome game. <laughs> and I know there's a lot of different games out there, better games, but man, I love DayZ. Um, it's one of those games that if I start playing it, I just want to play it for like 12 hours and just immerse myself in it. And, uh, and, and go for broke. I've, I've actually met really interesting, cool people um, on that game. It's a real uh, open world multiplayer online game. And it's, uh, it, it, it's amazing. Hardcore World War II fight sim guy. Um, Hell Let Loose from time to time. I haven't heard of Hell Let Loose. Um, I was a big Call of Duty um, guy, played all of the games. I remember getting the first Call of Duty where you had like 12 CD-ROMs that you had to install on a computer. I had that and I've played pretty much all of those. I've kind of gotten out of that um, realm. I bought the last World War, World War, whatever that was. I bought that. I played it for a little while and I was just like, ah, I, I couldn't do it. But the other game that I play a ton of, uh, or I, 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 I probably play equally maybe at this point, I do love myself some Madden football. Uh, I, I do love Madden football, and Madden football came to PC this year. I about blew my mind. Um, so I, meet, I kind of, uh, I was early on in the pandemic when I, when I found that. And I, man, I was playing Madden um, like, like crazy. I will check that out, Tula. I will check it out. So I would say my top two, Daisy, and then I would say um, Madden uh, football. I'll play that. I, I, I love that. Um, Tried to get into Rust. I couldn't really get into that. Um, Battlegrounds, I was doing that for a little while, but I couldn't really quite get into that. I'm trying to think. Scratch Off Lottery. I didn't know they made a video game about that, Brad. No. <laughs> um, trying to think of some of the other ones that I've played. I mean, I just like played DayZ, to be quite honest. I, I, got, I'm, I got addicted to that game for a while. I think I had like a thousand hours or something in that damn game. Like I'll never get those I'll never get those hours back. <laughs> but it's such an addicting game if if you guys have ever played it. It is a really, really uh addicting game to play. It's awesome. It's a little glitchy and it's been in development forever and all this, but the concept of the game is very, very, very cool. And plus you can like meet people. Like you can go find people and, and do all kinds of stuff. I like the interaction kind of stuff. 
Yeah, it's a thousand hours. I bet if I logged onto it right now, I bet I'm I bet I'm right around there. Like I'm either under like within nine hundred to eleven hundred hours probably in that game. I played it a lot. <laughs> I played that game a lot. I haven't played it very much much lately, but um, it was huge. PC Master Race. See, I haven't heard. I haven't heard of any. I must be out of touch. I, I must just have my blinders on um, to to all all games at this point uh, because I just fell in love with one, and I was just like, I'm gonna become really good at this game. And sadly, I never really became that good at it. <laughs> you know, I'm not that good at it. But man, it is a fun multiplayer, and it's slow. Like if you want to just go off by yourself and go fish, you can go do that. You know, if you want to go. You know, go start a war someplace. You can go start a war someplace. You want to build a base. You can build, like, there's just so many things to do. If you want to grow a garden, you can just grow a garden. You know, I grew, we grew a hell of a pumpkin patch one time. A bunch of friends met up online and we grew a pumpkin patch. It was a real thrilling gaming experience. <laughs> so many hot pockets. Hot Pockets. Now I just got that in my damn damn mind. But that is not what I was going for. The answer I was going for was Day Sleeper by R.E.M. So get with it. I break for Hot Pockets. <laughs> not worth a half-time job on YouTube. Oh, yeah, not, not with a half-time job. Totally. Totally. My wife told me that uh, one night when I was coming down here to do some stuff. She was like, you do realize you have a part-time job now. I was like, oh, yeah, I guess so. But, you know, I enjoy it. It's fun. Have you ever bought a bike without a title? Yes. Um, all of them but one. I, I think I have one, two, three, four, five. I have five motorcycles. One of them came with a title. I found a CB350 that's a good deal for a resto project. Just kind of weary about buying a bike without a title. Where do you live is the number one thing. Um, so in Michigan, where I'm at, it's pretty easy um, to get a replacement title. And then the other option, which I'm sure you have heard of, is, uh, is it Virginia? Guys, help me out. Which state is it that you can just like apply for a title and get it? Is it Virginia title? And you can do it from anywhere to do it. So you can get a title for these bikes. Mike's bike. That's us, bro. Gaming on PC is called PC Master Race. Kind of jabbed a con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I console. Meh. Yeah. If you're gonna do it, I, I think PC is definitely the the way to go. Hundred percent agree. Vermont. Yeah, it's a Vermont title. Um, start googling around Vermont title, and you, you you should be able to get one. I know a lot of people have have done that, and they've been been super successful with doing that. If you're in Michigan, though. And I can only speak for Michigan because, you know, I live here and that's, I've had to deal with it. Very easy to get a replacement title for something, as long as it's not stolen, right? As long as it's legit, it's totally fine. So yeah, Vermont title. Um, I'm sure if you go to the Honda Twins forum, um, that there'll be some information on, 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 on titling that and getting that good to go. Vermont title. That's right. Well, at least I, I, got, I got the V part right. That was good. Guys, a little bit, I'm, I'm running out of steam. I need some ideas. Like, what, what do we need to do? Because I'm feeling it a little bit tonight. I'm feeling a little tired. It's been a week. It's been a week. What am I thinking? Everything's gone so damn smoothly today. Oh, dude, Tula, it's easy. It's super easy in Michigan. Um, basically... Um, get a bill of sale. Th that would be the other thing, dude. This will probably help you out along the way. Um, if you're going to buy it, God, who was that? Da -da 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 Dog King. Get a bill of sale at least. Just print off a bill of sale form from Google and take that with you when you go buy it and have them fill it out. And then that's going to be something that you can prove that you bought it, bought it there. Yeah, so you title it. You can do it through Vermont and get a title from Vermont and then transfer it. That's, that's exactly the idea. Perfect. Yeah, I guess I never bothered to go to the cops to check the VIN number. I just brought it to the Secretary of State and was like, whatever, roll the dice. You know, if it comes back stolen, I'm out 100 bucks or whatever, because I buy these kind of basket case motorcycles, you know. Yeah, uh, moped people do it all the time here. 
in Michigan, you just say, I have a bill of sale, Tula. Um, I took a few photos of the bike with me um, to the Secretary of State. I filled out a form. There's a form. I could probably find a copy of it for you um, to fill out, bring that, and I think bring 50 bucks and submit it, and they sign off on it. They do a check on it, and then in like two weeks, you get a title in the mail. It's really that. Yeah, I think it was 50 bucks for a replacement title on, on, on it. it. Very easy. It's not a problem at all. Docking, I believe you get a registration through, through through Vermont. They don't title bikes older than 15 years old, and you can use that to get a title. Okay, it's something like that, dude. Like, ver, pe, there's a Vermont loophole that, you know, maybe people want to get on, so they'll probably close it at some point, right? Um, um, required notary. I didn't need notary on anything. Bill of sale, I just filled those out. Yeah, Tula, in Michigan, it's easy. I was blown away by how easy it was. I thought it was going to be this huge thing. Um, put that info on your site with the form for bill of sale. Vika, great freaking point. Or Vika. Ah. Slipped. I knew I was going to do it. I, I told myself that. I was going to do it. I'm, a, I'm just taking pictures of freaking smart stuff that everybody's saying tonight. And I can go back and, and do that. So, um, yeah, Vika, that's a good, 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 good call. Um, and then that Vermont title, I, I've never had to do it, so I've never really had to look into it. So, um, but I know it's an option, and I know a lot of people have done that in the past. So, that's an option for you. I'll do some more research, and we can post some information on it. But I know that like there is like so much information on that on Honda Twins forum. Oh, Indiana requires notary. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, there's a, I mean, I, I suppose there's a lot of different ways you could do it. Like if you had a friend in Michigan, I guess you could sell them the bike, um, get the title, and then they would sell the bike back to you. I don't know. Is that legal? Is that illegal? Did I just tell you to do something totally illegal? I don't, I don't know. I mean, not if you're selling me the bike for a short term and then I, then you sell, I sell it back to you, right? Maybe you find somebody in a state that, that could do that and that you trust that can do that. Yeah, you, Brad, you can't steal the, like, they're going to find out if it's stolen. Um, so it can't be a stolen bike. <laughs> no, it doesn't. I, I don't think it works that way. Yeah, uh, I think that that is a huge liability. And I do think that my lawyer um, would very uh, quickly um, advise me um, not to do that crump. Um, I need some legal advice on that. Uh, I, I think that that would be a very, very bad thing for, for me to get into. But sell all of our bikes to you. Yeah, sure. If you trust me, if you think, if you think that, I, you know, you can trust me, you know, to do that. Um, <laughs> we might have just made ourselves a little conspiracy here um, to do that. I'm going to go walking in. I'm going to go walking into the... Uh, uh, Secretary of State's office with like 50 <laughs> title replacement title applications and be like, hey, <laughs> oh, they'll be wondering what the hell's going on. I do have the perfect cover. You're, you're right. It's like, hey, this is what I do. I got lots of bikes. Stealing is bad. Stealing's very bad. Yes. Stealing is very bad. I'm in Illinois, and I think we don't have the best laws for getting titles for bikes without them. Yeah, I know some people really struggle, but um, they go to that Vermont thing, and they actually get it to happen. Brad, no, I'm not saying yes to that. <laughs> we can sell you all of our stolen bikes. Oh, Jesus. This is evidence. Abort. <laughs> Abort. Abort. I know, guys. We got to do this on Discord or Signal, Okay. This guy get off of YouTube. This is very, 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 very bad. Grab the trailer and the Hot Pockets. <laughs> oh, totally. Uh, ask for your dealer's license. Yeah. Um, yeah, going, going deep. But I do think, in theory, possibly, um, that might be a way to do it if you're buying bikes and selling them back. I mean, what is wrong with that? I don't see what's wrong with that. Give me a bill of sale. I don't know. Not like I'll ever do that. Like I would never, ever, ever do that. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, man. Man alive. Okay. Getting tired, y'all. Getting tired, honestly. I'm looking around, trying to see something that's like jumping off the wall at me here. As long as there's hot pockets, I'm in. How did Hot Pockets come up? How, how the hell did that come up? Oh, because of the song. All right, it's all coming back to me now. It's all coming back, <laughs> all coming back to me. Oh, what other projects do you have? Well, right now, I mean, I'm really focused on, uh, I'm focused on the uh, uh, 1971, 72 uh, Apocalypse bike, CBCL350. I'm not sure which way I'm gonna go. Uh, well, you have a problem with taxes, Tula? Do you want to go down that road? <laughs> uh, 01 State Electrical Board Exam. I bet you did, Brian. Yeah, the movie reference. Okay, uh, con congrats, Brian. <laughs> it throws me for a loop sometimes. Like when I'm seeing Brian, Brian T, Brian, like who's talking to me? I, I don't know. But then it's talking to them. Congratulations. That's awesome. Way to pass that electrical board exam. You can help me learn how to use uh, my, my electrical tools that I bought. I got to show you this. I think I bought. I think I bought the wrong meter. So, um, like, what did I buy here? Brian, you might be able to tell me. Like, I don't see any, like, 6 volt or 12 volt options on this tool. Like, what the hell did I buy? And then I, like, it's a 10 amp something or other, MM400. What the hell is this? <laughs> it's all coming back to you, meow. <laughs> yeah. I'm losing my mind. But yeah, I think I bought the wrong thing. And this is a really nice little unit, but it's all amps. And I was trying to do some stuff. It's auto ranging for the voltage. Oh, it's a house meter. Right, I ordered the wrong one. I had no idea there was even a freaking difference. So this is for house. So this will be useful. It's just not useful for what I'm doing. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this back in here. I did find one um, that, that clearly said it was like six volt, 12 volt, blah, blah, blah. And like when I looked at the dials, I was like, oh yeah, I'm familiar with all that. I was trying to test an electrical component the other night with this, and I was like, this isn't making any sense. I didn't realize I was so stupid. Yeah, well, Brian T., well, here's a, here's a question for you, since you are now, like, Mr. Electrical in our group, which I think is interesting, because I thought, and I hope you can see this, because I, I was really puzzling on this. I was like, what, is it only for AC? That could be, so I have these two. I have a 10A and then I have this one. So this middle one is obviously for my ground, right? So, and then this one, I have no idea what like 10A and then here's volts and ohms. So I was like, okay, I understand what volts and ohms are. You have to hold the select button to switch from AC to DC. All right, so if I go to volt right here, I'm up on volts. And it says volts here, holding it. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. Now it's at milli millivolts and volts. But the thing that blows, like I didn't understand is I would assume that if I'm on volts and I go and touch this to my battery, that it should like automatically jump up to like 11 or 11 and a half or something. Okay, so the 10A port is only for reading current. Okay, that's good. So I've got it hooked up correctly. So then why, when I touch these to my battery on my motorcycle, doesn't it go up to like 11 and a half or 12 volt? Like what step am I missing here? It'll auto range if you test a battery. Okay, let's go over here real quick because I literally burned like a half an hour um, trying to figure this out. And I was like, I, I just must have bought the wrong meter because I'm used to seeing all the 12 volt stuff. So let me pull this up. 
I'm actually glad I brought this up because I didn't want to bring it up because I didn't want to look stupid. But, um, I mean, why not, right? So, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> so, here's what happens. So, I think I have this set up correctly. I'm on volt, and it's a V on the, on the gauge. How do I switch it to DC? It's on auto. I don't see how to switch it to DC. If I hit select, it only goes to millivolts. It changes from a V to an MV. If I hold it, it just, it doesn't do anything. Oh wait, these, there's two different icons here. Oh, so one of these must mean direct current, one must mean alternating current. Okay, there's a wavy line on volts. What does that say when I do this? Okay, the wavy line just kind of didn't know what the hell to do with that. I got to I got to figure out what all these different things mean. I'm so puzzled. I'm like seriously so puzzled by this. Okay, measure it when it says MV. <laughs> Wouldn't want to look stupid to a bunch of people singing about hot pockets. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> David, run the apocalypse bike with no title. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the battery is totally charged. It's, it's actually on a trickle charger. Hold select on the meter again and read DC volts. What's, what, what icon is DC? Millivolts. Okay, it's on millivolts on a solid bar. Wavy line is AC. Straight line is DC. Okay, so I've got a straight line, so I should be able to measure this on millivolts. Twelve point nine seven volts. That worked. Oh my god. That worked. Okay, I just need to use the right settings. There, 12.97. How do I get it to like just stay there forever? <laughs> so I just need to remember millivolts and the direct line, and I could still use this to measure stuff. And then on the other side here, the, the, the like continuity would be here, right? On the, like the ohm, correct? So if I want to figure out if one wire is ending at a particular spot, I could just go to this and do that. I think that's what I can do with that. And really, I mean, what else do I typically need to do? So like if I have a wire here and I want to see if this ends and begins at the same spot. Yeah, so then that gave me a beep. Got it. Auto ranging. Okay, okay, okay. AC is wavy. DC is dotted flat line. Got it. So am I, I'm correct on the ohms and doing that. Okay, perfect. Yeah, because then it beeps. It's like, oh, yeah, it connected. Continuity, beautiful. And then if I want to do that, I go to volts. Direct MV. So that's what I'm looking at is doing that on here. And now I can go, whoops, and go over here. 12.97. Beautiful. Oh my God. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. That is super, super, super helpful. Dude, it's simple stuff, but if you don't know it, it's not simple. <laughs> if you don't know it, it's not simple. 
Yes, continuity and DC volts is all you really need on a bike. Okay, so this meter will work for me. I ordered another one, so whatever. Two is one, one is none. I'm a firm believer in, in that saying. I think that meter can also check the temperature of your hot pocket. There is, there is a temperature thing on this, actually. It's like got a Fahrenheit and a Celsius thing on here as well. I don't know what the hell that, that, that means. Yeah, lessons learned, man. This is, this is amazing. So it's, it is useful. I, I was like, because I'm so used to seeing like the 6 volt, 12 volt, and those options. And then when I got this, I was just like, this isn't making any sense. I've never seen anything like this. I love this. Yeah, Brian, I'm totally with you. Like, man, I learned. And now, like, I was just going to throw this thing on a shelf and never use it again. And this wasn't super cheap. I mean, I think this was 40 or 50 bucks to buy this meter. So, and that, hey, here's one other question. What the hell is this? What the heck is this? I don't even know what the hell this is. It says K-type on it. And it's got all this other stuff. That, this must be for house stuff. I don't even know. I heard the beep and it sounded like my microwave. <laughs> With a hot pocket. I got it off uh, Amazon. I got this one off Amazon for like, it was 40 bucks. It's sorcery. It's something. I don't know. It's not of this world. <laughs> Oh, it's a temperature sensor. Dog King. Okay, awesome. I was wondering what the hell that was. I don't know if I would ever need that. A temperature pro. Bro, my meter is $350. Well, uh, you're, you're an electrical, that's what you do in your career, right? So you need a $350 meter. This was like 50 bucks, 40 bucks, 50 bucks on Amazon. Then I bought another one that has the numbers and stuff that I recognize on it. Um, and that was like 30 bucks. So I bought that today. So I'm going to have, I'm going to have like 80 bucks in meters now. So I'm feeling pretty special about all that. Uh, d -d 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 temp probe. What the hell would you need like a temp probe for just like to make sure wires aren't getting overloaded or what? Ah, we got people like speaking languages. I got to get the discord. I got to get the discord going on. I think that I'm going to try to get that going this weekend. I think, I think, uh, I think we're going to do that this weekend for sure. All right. Wow. My mind's blown. My, my, my mind is literally blown. I, I've, I've uh, learned, I've, I've explored new things, took a starter out of a, of a motorcycle engine. We successfully extracted a very tricky situation, or the, or the bolt. This damn hot pocket thing, man. Tyler, this, yeah, it's going to make your hot pockets explode. I co-signed Vika's idea, giveaway, on the, on the other meter. Well, I might want to give away this meter, because I might like the other meter better. I'm with you. I'm with you. And, and stickers. We'll, we'll, we'll get into all that. We're going to get into all that. I just got to find a good way to do it. And stickers. Yes. Yes. And stickers. We're getting the stickers out to everybody for sure. Um, temp probe for checking things like cylinder. Cylinder temps. Okay. Jeez. Man, this stuff gets so damn technical. I mean, it just goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Obviously, you guys know I got kind of a base knowledge of what the hell I'm doing here. And I'm just kind of learning along the way. So. Oh, we got stickers. Drew made us some stickers. Okay, first person to email a photo of a Hot Pocket that they have created will get a sticker. <laughs> you got to procure a Hot Pocket, prepare a Hot Pocket, and provide some proof that it's, that it's an actual photo. <laughs> so we got our keep on wrenching stickers are in. I got a handful of them. How many do I have here? Two, three, nine, 12. I mean, technically, pretty much everybody who's hanging with the stream tonight could get a freaking, uh, 
could get a sticker for sure. I mean, you guys are sticking with me for a long time. Got my new sticker on my gas cap. Matches my orange highlights. Beautiful. Be right back. Run into the gas station. Yeah, email at Brian with an I at keeponwrenching.com. The first email that I get gets a sticker. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna freaking laugh my ass off. I'm gonna laugh so hard if I actually get a picture of somebody who made a freaking hot pocket. Um, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. But yeah, we just got some, some cool stuff uh, going on. Um, also, again, keep on wrenching the, the page. The merch is out. Um, so you can support the channel. Um, and see. Whoops. Doop. Bop. And you can support here. Uh, the merchandise uh, is all in place. You can always look at that stuff, too. Um, but I want to start getting some stuff out to you guys. I'm kinda, I kind of wish I would have gotten the gold jacket. I think that that would have looked pretty cool. That's a good riding jacket. Um, especially you get some armor or something on, on underneath or whatever. So, um, that'd be good. So yeah, merch is all out there. Everything's up on the site. I'll keep building out the website. If you haven't already signed up for the e-newsletter, um, get involved with the, uh, keep on wrenching group. If you haven't already, let's see if we got any new member requests, no new member requests. We've got a new couple new members today, 82 members. So that's good. Door dash me a hot pocket. Yep at keeponwrenching.com, keeponwrenching.com, Brian at keeponwrenching.com, and I will get that, and we'll do it. I mean, we've been hanging tonight for a long time, um, so this has been a blast. Again, we're going four hours. That's a strong stream. That's a strong, a strong stream for a Thursday night. I feel really good about it. I think we made some progress. We actually made more work for ourselves at the end of the day. <laughs> but that's how it all goes. Uh, I didn't see um, Hamilton show up today. Um, but uh, if he was on here, I wanted to make sure to let him know his parts are on the way. And everything's good. You want a hoodie in that orange? Let me see what I can do. If that's not already there, let me see what I can do on that and all that, so I'm, I'm gonna check my phone. If somebody had a freaking Hot Pocket in their thing, I'm gonna lose my mind. I'm gonna laugh so hard. Door dashed me a Hot Pocket. Oh, I just got my delivery confirm, or not delivery, but shipping notification for the other multimeter that I bought. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I don't see anything yet, but I'll see something and it'll go. It'll be awesome. Guys, I'm going to get you guys stickers. Don't worry about it. We're going to make you, we're going to get everybody in here. So let's see what we got. Hot, hot pocket sticker looking nice, Colin. Hey, welcome back. You took off for a little while. Uh, Vika, get a big call. Blah, blah, blah. Get it. I'm drinking. Brian, blah, blah, blah. Love that color. Yeah, orange. Let me look into that. <laughs> the power I have to just summon pictures of Hot Pockets. I guess if that is a, a skill or a, a power or a gift, I guess it's better than a kick in the ass. Mike, did Mike actually, did, did you actually send a picture of a Hot Pocket? <laughs> Come on. Come on, little amazing little handheld computer. That'd be a great way to end the stream tonight, honestly. Come on. New site visitor. Waiting, waiting for it. Not every superpower is great. <laughs> Obviously, if that's the case. That's brutal. Yeah, I gotta go check it. Brian at keeponwrenching.com. Inbox. Brian with an I. Make sure it's that. Yeah, I've been back for an hour or two, been multitasking. Awesome. I'm glad you're making progress on it. Glad you're making progress on it. 
See, Mike Bike's channel, I'm not seeing it yet. It's not coming through. They're holding it. Keep on wrenching. Brad, awesome to have you on the stream tonight, man. Uh, thanks for hanging out. That was, that was so much fun. Saying peace out as I need my beauty sleep. Brian, love the channel. Everyone else, you all rock. Hot pockets, absolutely. Uh, is what Brian gets for singing. <laughs> yeah, dude, uh, the hot pockets took over the night 100%. All right, dude, I'm trying to find, I'm not seeing this damn email. It's coming. It's coming. It's got to be coming through the, the ether here at some point. Hey, Vika, um, awesome having you here tonight. And there we go. We got a winner. It just popped in. I'm waiting for the picture to download, though. I need to see the picture. Then we'll call it. I get a Hot Pocket picture. We're calling the stream. Mike Bike's channel. Mike's Bike channel is going to be the winner tonight for sure. Let me see. So everything's operating very slowly tonight. Oh, my God. The Internet is... Uh, crawling along. I got the email. I'm just waiting for the photo to load. I'm actually refresh. Close all this up. Make sure we get that going. This has been a lot of fun. This has been a really fun stream tonight, man. Um, good, 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 good stuff. Good night, y'all. Clement, thank you for showing up, man. Thank you so much for joining the stream. Oh, Vika's got her stickers on, man. It just gets better and better. Great stream tonight. See you guys later, Dog King. Thank you for all your help and your input on the electrical stuff. That, like, blows my mind. Brad, good night. Break for Hot Pockets and Donuts. <laughs> good stuff. It's 11 o'clock. I'm waiting for this photo to load. I'm sure it's coming. Mike, I've got your email, so I'll get in touch with you. It's all good. Fun times for sure. Let's call the stream. Of course, um, thanks for all the support tonight. This was a blast. Um, check out the website. Look for new stuff. If you haven't signed up for the newsletter, sign up for the newsletter. Do all that stuff. Uh, thanks so much for watching. This is keeponwrenching.com. We'll see you in the next live stream or video.